Ready? Okay, having a quorum present, I'll call to order the Historic Landmarks Commission meeting of April 23rd, 2014. First item on the agenda is public comment. Any member of the public may address our commission on a subject that is not on our schedule today. I have one speaker slip, Ms. Sheila Lodge. Ms. Lodge. Um, press it again. There, you there we go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm Sheila Lodge, and I don't think there's an, anyone here that doesn't know that I'm Planning Commission Liaison Welcome. <laughs> to the HLC, and I just have some general comments that actually apply every time you meet, <laughs> you know, whatever's on the agenda. David Gebhardt was a good friend, and I was looking over some old minutes of what was then the Advisory Landmarks Committee, that I believe your mother served on, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Seating, and um, this is... Um, well, but before I get to that, it, one of the publications that he was involved in is it, uh, from a book on planning, city planning in uh, the in Spanish America, law number 134. They shall try as far as possible to have all one type of architecture for the sake of the beauty of the town. And this is from the collection of laws of the rulers of the Indies, Madrid, 1681. So you've got a long tradition here. <laughs> okay, I was going through over some old minutes of your, your predecessor committee. And, I, August, and this is in the days when they took really careful minutes. Uh, August 12th, 1974, Pearl Chase, Peter Edwards, David Gebhardt, Luda Maria Riggs, and John Woodward were on the committee at that time, among others. And they were discussing what was then the Commercial and Farmers National Bank at Anna Kappen and Carrillo Street, now the Rabobank. And Mr. Gebhardt said he would like to see a building that strongly suggests Santa Barbara specifically as a place and that takes into account the element of scale. This building does not convey the specificness of Santa Barbara. The basic aesthetics are not Santa Barbara and does not convey a sense of scale, especially in relationship to the little town club. The mass should be broken up. Well, those of you who remember the building know that a lot of that did not happen. And um, I spoke to John Woodward, who is still around, and he was on there, and he remembered that they had come up with a, well, the plans that they used for a bank in Oxnard, which was sort of steel and glass, and this was so much better, you know. They, they kind of gave in, mm. but I just want to urge you, don't give in. Remember, <laughs> these buildings are going to be around for a long time, probably long after some of us are gone, and what you do is very important to maintain what is specific to Santa Barbara and what may, helps make this such a special place. So thank you. Okay, thank that's you. very good. Thank you. Yeah. See no other public, I will close public comment and uh, ask for approval of the minutes of the Historic Landmarks Commission meeting of April 9th. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Drury, a second by Winnick. Under discussion, any additions, corrections, or clarifications? I Ms. Arias. I wonder if we have a report or comment from staff regarding uh, Mrs. Livernoy's uh, uh, comment regarding the Brinkerhoff district and the cement cinder block wall. We do. Um, Good, thank you. Uh, I. Um, let's see, so Commissioners Winnick, Suiting, and Drury drove by and reported back to staff, um, specifically Mr. Lamone and Ms. Hernandez. Mr. Ms. Hernandez did further investigation and um, brought the building inspector out there. The walls are um, built per plan. Um, do you have anything to add, Ms. Hernandez? Oh, go ahead. Mr. Anyone? <laughs> well, I, what I thought we, we would learn from this would be um, normally um, we don't get a streetscape of a uh, project that includes the adjacent structures unless we we're concerned about the massing. Right. That's, that's what historically I think boards have done. But in this case, you had nonconforming buildings to setbacks in really close proximity. So it does point to the fact that if you're going to build a wall, Consider what's right next door, exactly. right? Uh, and I think that's what was missing in the, in the review of this project. Yeah. Well, it, 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 when I, I when I recall reviewing it, it was a C or it is a C two zone. So they, <coughs> they that's that's where we kind of got caught in that the structures can be right on the property line, 
and it really doesn't read as a C2 zone at all. It reads yeah, as a residential, residential neighborhood. Yeah, mix. And I think there needs to be some consideration when that happens. Yeah, light and air. For light and air, certainly. Next, yeah, you know, um, but the house directly to the south was uh, right on the property line, and then they have a wall built. Fortunately, the wall stepped down a bit to allow some light and air into that window, but it was awfully close. So I think the lesson there is, yes, we need to have a little bit more consideration when, even if it's a C2 zone, what the neighborhood is, what sure, it reads as. Yeah. Yep. Can, can I add to it a little bit? Mr. Too? Jury, or Mr. Winnick, go ahead. Since, since I was there, I mean, uh, there are two things that I learned. One is we do need to go do site visits more often. Like, this is a case where whether we go as a commission or individually, certainly had I been on that street as a site visit beforehand making a decision, I would have made a different decision. I, I'll just say that right off the bat. And then the second thing is, is on the back wall, we agreed to a 15-foot tall wall because, you know, the applicant said that that's what it was to the adjacent property. But if, if this applicant's wall is 15 foot, then the one behind it probably was 14-2 or something. You know, in other words, this new wall on the back of the property is actually taller than the one that is adjacent that we were justifying why it should be that tall. So again, I would have specified not a height. I would have specified to be the same height as the wall behind it. I wouldn't have specified 15 feet. Not that we did, but that's how they came to us. So there is something to learn from this and, you know, how to be more sensitive to what's going on in the neighborhood. And I think Ms. Liver, Livernoy was correct in bringing it to our attention. Anyway. Uh, Mr. Chair? Mr. Yes, Mr. Mr. Malone, Mr. So there's really no relief for the, uh, the building to the south, which is a residence, and the wall is actually touching that the roof. Yeah. The eave. The eave. Yeah. And there's no, I'm, I'm, I assume because of the C2 zone that there is no relief for the well. further light in there. Not at this point. I, th I think in some cases um, there are adjustments made to new construction uh, at the request of the joining neighbors. We're in some debate now on a reconstructed fire damaged building that is in close proximity and the rebuild is being debated about how close it should be rebuilt because it does impact the neighbors. So you can't, there is an opportunity with new construction to adjust uh, it's very rare that you require an existing building to be altered as a result of a new building. Yeah, yeah, we're stuck with it. Or adjust the one that we already approved. We, right. we, we right. missed our yep. chance, yes. and I, I admit that we missed our chance. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Rios? No, but thank you for the input. Sure. Any other um, additions, Chair. corrections, or clarifications? Thank Commissioner Chair. Mahan. Yeah, on, on page four, uh, under in motion uh, after item one, we enthusiasm for this project. Uh, I think item number two should be that the board accepted the recommendations of the subcommittee uh, mm. regarding the approval of revisions to the uh, south uh, element of, of uh, section B. Let me, let me say it again. That, that uh, item number two should be that the board accepts the recommendations of the subcommittee uh, regarding the uh, uh, approved revisions to the uh, south uh, element of the building in, in uh, block B or block B. Area B. Area B, yeah. The second floor, it was a addition yes. to the second floor. And then I have another item on. Are you clear on that, Ms. Feliciano? Okay. And then on item page five, uh, the, uh, item four of the motion, the handrails shall be galvanized instead of painted. I don't think it was a handrail. I think it was the base. Wasn't it, it was. Correct. Yes. It was the base. Correct. The base that supports the handrail should be painted. Galvanized. Should be galvanized and not painted. Gal galvanized and not painted. Correct. Okay. So that should read that the base of the handrail yes. post mm -hmm. shall be galvanized instead of painted. Right. Anything else, Mr. Mayhem? Nope. Anybody else? Clarifications? Good with that. Corrections? Okay. All in favor of the minutes as Aye. amended? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Lavoie abstain. Motion carries. Next item is the consent calendar. Mr. Lamone. Oh. Consent calendar? I have it. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Hernandez has the consent calendar. <laughs> I covered for Michelle today. Very well. Um, we had um, two items on consent that was reviewed by Don Sharp. 
613 East, East Victoria was has final approval as submitted. And 1129 State Street has final approval as submitted. Thank you. I have a motion to ratify the consent calendar. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Aria, second by Winnick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Next is announcements, uh, request by applicants for continuances, withdrawals, any future agenda items, appeals, anything on Planning Commission, City Council, or Parks and Rec Commission the Commission should be aware of? <laughs> yes, Chair Suiting, that Commissioner Murray will be absent from today's meeting, and Commissioner Winnick will be leaving at 3.30. And Mr. Lamone has an announcement regarding the outdoor patio furniture. Oh. Yes. So we have some new applications that involve um, uh, heaters and um, half umbrellas. This is sort of a new uh, concept of mobile uh, issues that uh, are within your purview. And these half umbrellas, um, I guess, were not accepted by... Mr. Sharp on consent. It was Mr. Oh, was yeah, it? I think I looked at him too. Did you, Mr. Sudi? Right. And it's unusual in the sense that um, it's sort of a new product that starts coming out, along with these um, energy efficient electric heaters or radiant heaters. We used to see the old type of propane, yeah. but now we're getting very uh, innovative. Yet they look sort of modern in some degree. So we thought that we might need to revisit just what type of uh, outdoor furniture and amenities are acceptable. So enhancing the outdoor dining uh, guidelines a little bit to be more specific. That way they don't come in and buy them, unfortunately, and then ask that they be accepted. And that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the wrong way to do it, go about mm -hmm. it. So um, so we need a kind of a subcommittee for that. I would like to do that, yes. Um, um, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Rios? Um, the last time I recall uh, a sensitive area that had heaters and umbrellas was the El Paseo. Mm -hmm. And that would be a good reference point, which might save you time and the necessity for a subcommittee or whatever. Well, I, I, I think the goal is to establish more than one option. Okay. Mm. And uh, I, I'd hate to have them all one type, but if we could have some choices, mm. I think that would be the preferred uh, approach, but that would be the starting point, like you say. We know some that have already been approved, yeah. and let's just see if we can expand it a little bit so we have choices. All right, do I have any, uh, I want two volunteers. Uh, I'll on, volunteer. On uh, okay, Sharp and Winnick, thank you for volunteering. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Anything else? No, any no commissioners have any announcements? Mr. Chair? Commissioner Not an announcement, it's a question for staff. Um, I noticed uh, the the um, installation of bollards at the corner of Anapamu and Milpa Street, well, down from the, in, right in front of the, uh, the new county bowl. And the county bowl has been going along very beautifully, and all of a sudden, over the last three or four days, there's these <coughs> square concrete bollards. And I wondered if they were approved, if I don't remember them ever coming before us, no, and what kind of um, action can be taken if, if it's on city property. It's right on the, on the it's sidewalk. Can, it's, uh, it's probably county property. But, Mr. Lamone, do you want to yes, respond? Yes, th that, that property is unusual in the sense that there's uh, two review bodies, uh, actually three, uh, looking at it. The ABR had a portion of right. oversight as well as the Historic Landmarks Commission. So we can verify if the ABR looked at those or not. And obviously this is a county facility, so they, they have some uh, review authority there. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Jury. Anyone else? Mr. Lavoy. Mr. Lamone. Parking seems to be a problem again, and there seems to be an awful lot of white cars in designated spaces. And I'm parked about two blocks away. I'm not blocks We'll excuse cars. you for being late, then. <laughs> I will go out and do a little policing today. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Any other announcements? All right. Subcommittee reports. Um, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Drury. Um, Commissioner Sharp and I met um, at the Libero with the La Entrada Lighting Project. Mm. And they, um, they put various gobos up for us, cast them across the street in the Libero building and the Libero Theater itself. And I think that um, Commissioner Sharp brought up a really good point about precedent. And um, I think our take on it is they can, go, they can proceed with a presentation, including those gobos, in a formal setting, but that we thought that the use of those constituted a very, very fine line between 
uh, gentle illumination than advertising. And I thought that the, the idea, I, I proposed the idea that just lighting the, the existing flora when it's, when it's planted in that courtyard would be probably enough patterning on the wall as opposed to a formal Moorish design. And I, I think that Commissioner Sharp agreed pretty much. Well, I, as you said, I'm concerned about the precedent setting of this. Uh, we have a uh, restaurant bar on downtown that has projected a big sign on their side of their building. Uh, we have another sign projected on a sidewalk on State Street. And uh, if one were to argue, there's no difference between the two. And that is, it's a very fine line, but it's uh, a cause for concern. We, we really have to be concerned about that. Yep. Okay. Appreciate you two going to that um, mock up. You. Any other subcommittee reports? Hearing none, we'll go to the first item. First item is a continued item. Item number one, 1936 State Street. This is proposal for a new sign application for a proposed new building with two commercial tenants. <clears throat> Signage will include a total of 31.8 square feet to include 16.5 square feet for one tenant and 15.3 square feet for the other tenant. The sign application was reviewed by the sign committee on April 9th. The project was referred to HLC by planning staff to request a final determination of the monument sign, sign A. Um, also want to point out the staff report or memo we have from Mr. Lamone that you all have a copy of. Um, we have Mr. Lamone here. We have the applicant here. We have one speaker slip. Um, go ahead with your presentation, please, Mr. Uh, Great. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> um, can we pull out the plans for the architecture? Michelle said that they were going to be here today. Uh, the, <laughs> Just because she Thanks. said it doesn't mean it happened. Well, we do, we do have a plan here. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I wanted to start with the, uh, the civil engineering because it's, um, it's really pertinent uh, to what you're looking at today. And, act, you know, I'm sorry this is so complicated for, uh, for a sign, but it's turning, turning out to be. I can start um, with... Um, just an explanation of, mm -hmm. the, of the civil design. Uh, yeah, right yeah, put that in front. We, um, as you might recall, yes, thank you. there's two driveway entrances uh, for this project, <coughs> and. Um, the one along Mission uh, occurs um, approximately where the existing um, driveway occurs right here. We're narrowing up the curb cut. Uh, but this is, the reason I'm mentioning this is because this is really determining the finished floor level of the building. We're coming down at the maximum grade that's possible here given the civil engineer's design uh, and sloping the, the parking lot as much as we can uh, and minimizing our curb heights in order to end up with a finished floor level of 163.4. In addition to that, and we can look at this, uh, this sheet C2 is where the civil design is, but um, or you could take my word for it, uh, but this um, retaining wall across the front it's, uh, starts at about two feet high at this end and ends up being uh, exactly three and a half feet high at this end. It's, the top is flat. It's because the driveway is sloping that the, that the um, finish, mm -hmm. that the height changes. Um, is a, it's a catchment basin for all of our roof runoff and site runoff because, because this is a, um, a contaminated site, some soil is contaminated. Percolation. We can't percolate. So mm. we're, we're having to contain, uh, you know, 100 year storm mm. water in this basin um, and then release it slowly over time uh, to, so that we don't exceed our, our storm water requirement. So if you, you'll see that this is actually a poured concrete wall. This, this back mm -hmm. wall here comes across like this, and this is all poured concrete as well. It's, it's part of the civil design. And 
and in, and I'm, again, this is, this is compl complicated because what we're looking at is the sign that's going to go on this corner. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues of the ordinance is that you're not allowed to artificially create a higher grade in order to put a pedal pedestal sign on the top. Mm -hmm. But in fact, you know, this we are we've kept this wall as low as we possibly can and still get our containment for water. In addition to that, and so this this wall that's on this side just matches what's on this side. So and then these slope up just slightly so that we're six inches above uh, the sidewalk level mm -hmm. at, at its highest point up here. Same thing on this side. Um, so it's 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 just turns out it's exactly three and a half feet high right here. And that's the minimum, according to the ordinance, that you have to be uh, off the sidewalk in order to be allowed a six-foot height dimension for a pedestal, pedestal sign. Mm -hmm. if, if the wall is, or the grade is lower than that, it's measured from the sidewalk as opposed to the raised grade. So the so, finished grade in here is about 162, 161.9, something, uh, something in there. Yeah, it's just below the, the top the of the wall. wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the other thing I want to mention is that a um, couple other things. One is that we're we just got received our first building plan check back, and according to Chris Hansen and Elizabeth Sorgman, we uh, the new interpretation of the ADA code is that the accessible path has to be as close as possible to all able-bodied paths. So if we have four able-bodied paths to the building, we have to have an accessible path as close. close as feasible to that to that path. So I looked at, um, obviously, you know, that's going to impact us heavily right at that corner because uh, the building finished floor is almost four feet off the sidewalk right at this corner. So if we were to, to provide an ADA ramp at that corner, it's going to look something like that. Pretty. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, my God. Which <laughs> is, you know, obviously, yeah. And, and, in fact, this sidewalk is sloping at 8%, and that was one of our arguments. You know, you're, you're just feet away from a sidewalk that's, that's meeting sense. the slope code, and you could just come across this here, where we're, we're at sidewalk level right here, and come back like this. And, in fact, the path of travel for that distance is 100 feet, and it's 100 feet if you use this and come back here. It's the same distance. But still, it doesn't, apparently, I'm, I'm being told by Chris Hansen, I just met with him yesterday, it does not meet the intent of the code to, to force the handicapped person to come up the sidewalk and, and, and go around because they're being separated from the able-bodied person. Okay, to, by, to, but that's kind of, a, it's so, important well, and germane to what you're talking it's, about. It's but. germane because this, this is the alternative that he found acceptable, which Excuse is me, moving the stair around to this side. This is the same copy? Yes, it's another copy. There's three copies. Yeah, we got it. Okay. You're okay. All right. We're fine. Um, <clears throat> so, so, in fact, there won't be a stairway right here. Uh, it, it, this, this is an acceptable alternative for the building department because we're close enough mm -hmm. to the accessible path um, that, that the stairway works on this side. If we were to leave the stairway on this side and do this, we still wouldn't be meeting code. We'd still have to, to do that ramp issue uh, uh, closer to the, the, to the stairway. So... So we still have this wall that's running along the length, and you know, aesthetically from the street, uh, where's the color drawing? If I mean, um, this is this is what was approved by the board, and it does provide a nice pedestal uh, for the building, and and makes sense that that the height should just simply continue around this corner, uh, and without the stair, even it still becomes a very uh, to my eye, uh, aesthetically appropriate um, to it's as opposed to indenting, trying to drop the grade in here, which would also mean that this corner of the building would be going down another three and a half feet. You'd suddenly have this tall corner right at, at the corner of the building. Uh, and the, if we were to try to drop the grade in here, the sign, which has to be a foot and a, one foot eight back from the front property line, would be blocked by this higher wall. higher wall, which has to be here. This wall has to mm -hmm. be here for our containment. So um, that's, you know, all of those issues uh, impinge on this design, but we also believe that we are meeting the intent of the code because um, 
In fact, a strict reading of the code, and Jaime will... I need to get these pens out of the way because okay, you can't sure. see on the television exactly what you're getting at. Let's go back to Mr. Lamont. So then back to the sign, uh, which these drawings were done before we knew we had to take the stairway out. But um, again, as long as we're not artificially creating a grade, uh, that for the purposes of raising the height of the sign. No, we're not, art, we're not artificially creating a grade. We've created something that's aesthetically appropriate to the building and to this corner, which was approved by the board, is governed by the civil engineering allowed for the site uh, that had to be. Um, and so it, it was already going to be a raised planner. We didn't even know what the sign was going to look like when we designed this. Um, and so now this is, we're, we're, we want to measure the, the base of the sign from the top of the wall or the top of the grade would be fine. It could be, if we want to go down a few inches to get to the top of grade, we're fine with that. It's a, it's a very modest sign. It looks something like that. Um, it's got a, uh, there's a, there's a detail of it. Hold on, that's, okay. that's city TV. This is from the Mission Street I, side. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is, this is good enough. Okay. So it has a, a wrought iron frame uh, on which two wooden boards are hung uh, that are sandblasted and then painted uh, painted letters. May I indicate what a human would be here? Sure. Probably right about there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, let's make sure the applicant is finished. Is that pretty much right? Yes. Book? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah, you have the dimensions of the sign. It's six foot by uh, two six. Oh, there is a detail in there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay. By nine, nine four. Nine four, outside tip to outside tip. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, that concludes your presentation. I'll open it for public comment. I have two speaker slips, one from Milton Hess, Mr. Hess, and then the following is Callum DeForest. Mr. DeForest, you're, you're ready. Come on up, please, Mr. Hess. Mr. Lamone will give you his seat. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Milton Hess. I live at 14 East Los Olivos Street. Welcome. And thank you. Um, I'm a member of the board of the Upper East Association. We represent um, over 235 member households in the Upper East neighborhood, and we have followed this project with interest. Um, I ask you simply, to keep in mind that this site is at the entry to the um, Outer State Street Parkway, as well as to the Mission District. And so the board of the Upper East Association hopes that the signage you approve will not detract further from the appearance of this intersection. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Hess. We appreciate you coming, taking the time. Mr. DeForest. <coughs> Hess is saying, and uh, because this is a very important corner, I'm somewhat dismayed that both a subway and a 7-Eleven are going in here. I hope the uh, planning... Oh, me. I hope that planning has figured out, since these are fast food restaurants, is there going to be sufficient parking or ways for the public to access these stores. I mean, often, at least the 7-Eleven up on Upper State Street has lots of access for cars, and this seems a little limited. As for signage, I know the code allows uh, companies to use their logos, but it surely for this important intersection, would the corporate uh, renters, tenants, uh, con consider a moder moderation of their 
logo so it doesn't look like it, every other shopping mall where there are 7-Elevens and Subway sandwich shops and it looks more like Santa Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. I'll close public comment and bring it to the commission for questions. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Jury. I have a question for the applicant. Uh, maybe you just, just state why there's a, a difference in grade from the Orange Tree Motel down to Mission Street. Just, just for the general information. Of uh, why there's a different in grade, difference yeah. in grade at, at the sign? Yeah. Actually, there... Uh, the motel has a raised planter in front as well. It's what? up, it's up uh, higher, in fact, than our finished floor level, and they've raised their planter right to the curb. So there, I believe it's like a four-foot wall right at the curb, and it has a planter right there. But it's also because the road from Pedregosa, the street, goes downhill to Mission Street and State Street intersection. I think that's the kind of the guy. And, and, the, and the, both lots are sloping from back to front to street right. frontage. That's yeah. important mm -hmm. to know. Thank yep. you. Sure. Uh, yes. I have a question Can staff, sort of the um, uh, as I remember, monument signs in the sign ordinance or guidelines are supposed to be near the primary drive entrance, automobile entrance, um, and not necessarily pedestrian entrance to businesses. Mr. Loy, the, 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 you're correct. The, the guidelines uh, do acknowledge that the location of signs should be geared towards more the automobile user to identify them where the entryway is to the facility in advance so they can make that uh, entry. Um, however, um, over the years, um, we've developed sort of a uh, standard of um, certain uses having uh, these placed on the corners, for example, uh, uh, gasoline service stations or, or motels. Uh, so I did a quick survey of my existing monument signs to see if I could find similar conditions. And the only one I could find, uh, well, actually there were several, but the only one that I knew that were approximated this height was a Bank of America sign on Coast Village um, Road. Uh, and I have photos of that sign. Um, my um, reaction to um, seeing uh, a monument sign when it's not uh, a typical use monument is that it's a uh, um, an exception to the normal uh, uh, signage patterns for for commercial. As you go up State Street, you don't start seeing monument signs until past Mitchell Train up to 1700 mm -hmm. block and mm -hmm. so forth. So it does transition to the outer State Street uh, area where there is more predominance of, of that. And you do have a more traffic pattern that is conducive to that. So um, I just wanted to show you that there was an existing monument. Sure. Put on my phone. Okay. So we'll see if CCTV can zoom. Zoom in yes. on that. See if we can get them to do that. That's the mm -hmm. current uh, condition. Is that it? Uh, it's like that. Like so that. the planter right now for the former gas station did have a lower planter. So our point is that the planter is being raised from what's there currently. Mm -hmm irrespective of the fact that it's necessary for whatever reason to finish that floor television three car. And I wanted just to point it out that um, as you transition, there are some examples of planters used for ground signs. Here we have two tenants, which is compounding the problem for two signs in the, in the monument. Mm. That, uh, here's what they did in um, on Milpa Milpa Street Correct. recently. Uh, however, they were, um, there was an existing sign already there in that planter. Mm -hmm. And they uh, try to minimize it. And I wanted to show, oh, that's my other photos. Um, Uh-oh. Where are the kids? Well, it's, it's, <laughs> now you're in trouble. <laughs> here, here you got some examples of. Which again, is just down the street. Grade, from, yeah, on the mm -hmm. 18, 1700 block, where there are examples where grade does change. And I believe the sign ordinance reflected that in certain cases you're going to have grade above sidewalk and you have to account for the possibility that there's a ground sign that's being proposed. We have examples of low-profile type signs. Here's the one at Bank of America. Mm -hmm. So if you stand at that sidewalk, the top of that sign is about seven and a half feet. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a visibility issue which, which was recognized that, that location to raise the Bank of America so people could see it. 
Which location is that Bank of America? Uh, Montecito, Coast it's Coast Coast Village Road, Road and okay. middle or front of those. So it's not in APV. And, but. and again, that doesn't really speak to the entrance, so we do deviate from where people want to identify their business. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. All right. Any other questions? Well, we've gotten to Commissioner Lavoie Reyes. Okay. Commissioner Reyes? Nothing at this time. Anybody else? Any well, questions? That, that does beg a question. Where is there going to be additional shot signage showing someone where the where the driveway entrance is? There's none proposed, other than what we're showing here today. So there's the one ground sign, and then some blade signs on the building, uh, and some uh, backlit signs uh, at the entrances <coughs> on the building, but none at the driveway. Any other questions? One I have yes, for, again, um, Mr. Lamone. Um, are there any provisions in the sign ordinance for safety for someone walking along the sidewalk and someone coming down Mission, for instance, in this case, and not seeing a pedestrian or an automobile? Yes. And the, these clearances, dimensions, were reviewed by our traffic engineer and signed off. And um, there, there is no... It's safety issue with the proposed locations. Commissioner Mayhan. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can we put that back? Oh, well, you've got, I got it here already. The, the, the question that I have is, has the applicant um, considered two sets of steps? Since, since um, this, this architecture here, this, this uh, Islamic arch, um, it begs for steps. Is there a problem with having two sets of steps? Yes, I, uh, I did mention that briefly. Uh, the, the problem with leaving these steps where they are is that we still need the ramp because the ramp has to be located as close as physically possible to the able-bodied entrance. No, no, my question so, is to have two sets of steps. Right, right. So if we leave this, we still need a ramp. Even if we put, there's, and then there's no way to get stairs over here. We leave the stair, we need the ramp here. Well, if, if you put the stairs in here and you have the stairs here, why can't you, why wouldn't that, why wouldn't that ramp work adjacent to these stairs? Because according to Chris Hansen, every able-bodied path of access to the building has to have an accessible path as close as physically possible to the able-bodied path. In other words, if you have two sets of stairs, you need two able with two it, ramps. Yeah, located as close as possible to them. Yeah. So, but you know, as I mentioned, by because uh, in this case, we're an able-bodied person. This is this was the way it was explained to me. An able-bodied person using this stair would not lose sight of or be out of voice contact with a handicapped person having to go up the sidewalk. And use uh, it and, mm -hmm. uh, so that takes that care way. of your ramp over there. Yeah, the sidewalk then is functioning as our ramp in this case. But what, I, I think Mr. Mayhem's question, though, is, is still pretty valid, that if you had two sets of steps like, like this, you still have that one. I, I get what you're saying about Mr. Hansen saying that every able-bodied access point has to have a ramp next to it. Well, I don't know. They're, they're well, within close enough proximity. The argument could be made that this is um, easily cited. Uh, what, you know, I'm not going to argue with the building code. But. Well, no. I actually, it is okay to argue if you don't mind my jumping you in. You go right ahead. I, I, I know usually that. we're into comments, but uh, questions, but I, I think we're well, comments I, I'd like to. I'd like to make sure that it's clear to everyone before we go into comments that because the, you know, uh, this, is, this was our argument to Chris was that um, that this sidewalk is has only an eight percent slope. That, I, I got it the first time. I'm okay, all right. I mean, okay. I'm, so I mean, I, okay. putting, putting in two sets of stairs is not going to work. Any more questions, the building Commissioner? That's that's why. Well, the question sure that it, the question, question that I have actually is, and I'll start with a statement. Mr. Hansen, though we revere him and everything, and invite him to advise us and also give lectures, is no longer a building official. Okay, he, he, he he's he, a consultant. He's a consultant, so, and he is he is plan checking this project. 
So they do have them. Yeah. Well, I would, I would invite you to this comment, but I guess my question would be, have you gone up to the building official, Mr. Estrella, and ask him his opinion on this question? Because it's a pretty important question. And my background in terms of applying, I know it's not historic code here, but I've applied historic code and also found that the building officials can be discretionary when it, common sense clearly Prevails. dictates. <laughs> and this has an unusual siting condition. It has unusual yeah. grade. It's not... Normal. So I, my question is, have you gone up to that level? Well, uh, no, I haven't. I haven't consulted with George Estrella. I I will mention though that uh, I spoke to both Elizabeth Sorgman and Chris about this, and this has been going on for weeks. So the discussion about this has been going mm -hmm. on for weeks, and Elizabeth has pointed out that they're, they've been recently retrained as plan checkers because the interpretation of the code and the understanding of code and the strict guidelines that they're supposed to be following have been shifting just over the last six, 10 months, mm -hmm. they've been shifting. And this, this one in particular has been of primary focus that the, that as I've mentioned now several times that the, that the uh, accessible path has to be located as close as physically feasible yes, I get it. to the able-bodied path. So that's the key. And it's, it's mentioned uh, more than once and that, and that every able-bodied path has to have that accessible path as well. Mm -hmm. um, so Elizabeth has reinforced it, and, and then I not only uh, had email exchanges with Chris, but also met with him yesterday. He was adamant about it, that the sidewalk simply would not work. I, I, I trust that, given how long Chris has been around and what Elizabeth told me, but if the commission feels that we need to have George Estraic if his opinion on it, then you know, we'll do that. Let me ask a question then. Is the, um, the handicap access sign that you see frequently in, in other buildings um, pointing to wheelchair access, is that no longer um, it's still a tool? It. it is a tool. It's still a tool. It, but uh, that's allowed when a able-bodied path is not feasible. And there are conditions where an able-bodied, you cannot, or excuse me, where the, where the accessible path is, is, not not, is not feasible. Well, I call that located. not feasible because it's wiping out the landscape. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Mr. we Chair, can get yeah. comments. Oh, Commissioner Jury. I just uh, really asked the applicant, would you prefer to have two sets of stairs as you, as, when you did mm -hmm. the overlay? Like you, I, I mean, we designed this with stairs pointing towards the main entrance to the building from the very beginning. They've, that's where they've always been located. So I think it works very nicely with the building, but we're being forced into a position where it just doesn't seem feasible. So I'm, I'm, that's our conduit. Okay. Our conduit. Well, I would just say feasibility and discretion might be two key words in terms of mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go for comments then. We'll start with Commissioner Sharp. Well, I... I think the sign is overly large for the corner. I think there are other ways of uh, signing the building that's more appropriate. I have always questioned why that wall was three and a half feet high instead of two and a half feet. Um, and uh, I cannot support the corner sign. Okay. Commissioner Mahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The the architecture, you know, when you take the stairs away from the State Street, uh, from mm. this very, very beautiful archway, um, it doesn't quite work. Where are you? There it is. That's what you want. want. There we go. It's on. The, um, the, 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 I, think, I think if the stairs move around to the emission side, uh, that affects the, the architecture, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. and, and I think if the applicant needs to give this reconsideration, if, if the wall would just go by there, if, if, if somehow that doesn't work too well for me, architecturally. I, I think the double stairs solves the problem, at least solves that problem, architecturally. As far as the sign goes, I've always felt that, that uh, this, this, this wall that these uh, steps die into, the, um, I have a pointer there. That's right over there. Yeah, the, but but the but the uh, the elevation that shows the old. Yeah, th this wall. 
this wall here that the steps die into wouldn't have to be as high. These these steps could, this wall could be lower, and and these steps mm -hmm. somehow could come back on themselves or something. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different ways mm -hmm. to handle that and lower this wall down a little bit. But 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 these are very very important to this archway, and and I would hope that 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 some. <coughs> Building department would find a way to approve uh, double steps. I think it's it's important. <laughs> and, this, and this, and we want to remember, this is the corner of the entrance to uh, El Pueblo Viejo, and uh, it makes me think of the corner of the uh, courthouse going into the uh, Hall of Records. A very beautiful double arch with steps on both mm -hmm. sides. I don't think we want to just let that slip away. Thank you. Uh, I, have a question. I have a question to staff, first of all. Uh, in terms of our agenda here, it's actually just about signage. It's not about review after final on the building architecture, correct? Like, for instance, the stairs. That's correct, but as you consider the sign, uh, it's pointing out that it might be a redesign, so right. maybe so, uh, comments directed on how you could uh, incorporate the sign. In my, the my reason for asking is I just want to make sure that whatever comments we're making regarding the stairs are not considered a final decision. It's more giving direction to the applicant, right. but our comments really are Yeah, Mr. Gradin has to come sign. back with a revision. Okay, thank you. Sign. I just wanted to make sure that... We, so um, I concur with what I've heard before in terms of the stairs. I think the double stair solution, I think brought to the building, I really feel that it should be brought to the building official to look at it, to look at how silly that ramp option was that we saw, um, that, you know, which obviously you're trying to accommodate the building code, but in this case it's silly and really doesn't make sense, that the architecture is much better with the stairs facing State Street. It would be very nice to have the stairs facing Mission. And I guess I would advocate in this case, given the prominence of this corner, that the sign, I know this isn't going to be your favorite response, but that the sign follow the line of questioning that Commissioner Lavoie asked, and why not put the sign over by the parking entrance and solve it and not have it at the corner of State Street and Mission? Okay. Commissioner Rios? Um, if the applicant wishes to go for a redesign regarding the stairs, that would be fine. But presently, right now, I could not support the sign as it is, is presented to us. Um, another option that could be done is that the actual wording and sign itself could be reduced. It's far too um, big for that corner and um, not appropriate. Commissioner Lavoie? Well, I think the stairs should come up from the corner. Um, <laughs> that might solve it. <laughs> that might solve it. <laughs> um, Did you sketch that out for me? Sure. I'll do it right now. It'll be close enough. I won't, I won't charge much. Um, <laughs> I, um, this is the wrong corner for a sign that big. And, and, I, and I, a sign this big at the, either of the driveway entrances to me is much more acceptable than on this corner. Mm. Commissioner Drury? I agree with the previous comments. I can't support the sign at this place. And I, I would also uh, encourage um, looking at those steps, uh, two sets of steps, and I don't know, pleading is the right word, but. Uh, petitioning the building department to look at this as a, a real, a beautiful project that needs to be finished out properly. My, my only comment would be that the, the, the ramp option really isn't supportable <laughs> because it just wipes out more than 50% of that very important landscape. And mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that's the right thing to do on a corner like this. We need as much buffer between the sidewalk and um, the building, so I, I, I don't think we can support the ramp option at all. Um, so let me summarize the um, comments, and I'll try to um, segregate them between sign and um, other um, comments. Um, the sign is overly large and too tall for the corner. The commission cannot support it as proposed. Um, the sign signage at the driveway may be more at the driveways may be more appropriate. Um, the applicant shall look at the original location of the steps as a solution. That location, placement, 
off of the State Street sidewalk is important to the architecture. There may be other solutions, such as putting it on the corner. The ramp option is not supported by the commission. Did I get everything? Uh, the, the, the ramp option as shown. Okay. The ramp option as shown is not supported by the commission. And it also be against the ramp. Yeah, okay. And there also is the a possibility of um, having a second set of stairs that that was interesting to the commission as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, applicants shall look at a second set of stairs combining the original location and the one presented today mm -hmm. off of the Mission Street sidewalk. Okay. Does somebody want to make that motion? So what would you like, two weeks? Just some... Uh, clarification. Um, yes, two weeks would be great. Okay, mm -hmm. let's get through the motion sure, so that sure. we know if it, it, and then you can get the clarification because if it doesn't pass, then there's no sense in getting the clarification. Um, so, do I have second? Some point, want, to, want to make a motion? I move. Mahan? Second. second. Mahan, Winnick, second. all in favor? Aye. 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 Wait, I'm sorry, under discussion, Mr. Cardin. Thank you for your insightful comments. I um, just wanted to be clear that um, it sounds like the sign in its current location should just be rethought. Mm -hmm. That even if the planter was lowered, say, to two and a half feet, as was one commissioner mentioned, still having a sign that was six feet high in a two-foot planter is not going to be acceptable in that spot. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other... Thing I just wanted to be clear about and get direction, clear maybe clear direction, uh, was that if the building department, uh, i.e. Georgia Strait, mm -hmm. says that we, if we are to have a stair in this location, or maybe maybe shifted to the corner is a possibility. Uh, if let's let me put it this way, if if a Stairway along the State Street sidewalk side is not allowable unless we have a ramp along the State Street sidewalk side. I, I would like some direction, if I could, some comments about how, how to approach that. Or, or let me, well, to simplify it, would, a, would it be acceptable simply to have the stair on the side? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Jury, we we have a motion on the floor, and and we're we're treading um, bad water here, so I'm going to allow Mr. Jury's question, and then I'm going to call the question. I, I think that the uh, direction was from Commissioner Mahan in terms of the the opening up of that arch, which is a really prominent feature of that corner of the architecture that requires the stair and yep. those stairs. And that's what my motion said. It said yeah. that yes. the um, relationship of the side or of the stair to the State Street side arc is important to the architecture. Yeah. So that's in the motion. That's All it. in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Motion carries. Shall I think it? these are pretty clear. Okay. If you if you read them carefully again, um, I well, think you'll have the direction you need. Well, the, the reason I wanted a little bit more discussion about it is because that is my understanding, just the way I stated it, that if we have an able-bodied access off of the State Street mm -hmm. sidewalk, then we need an ADA access right. off the State Street sidewalk. And if we try to locate it on this side, we're going to I, impinge on our... I get plan. you. And, and, and so, if you pursue the building official, um, perhaps, because, um, you know, logic needs to, to, to prevail here. Mr. Okay. Chair. Okay. Mr. Lamont, just to one some copies. Clarification I'd like. So it looks to me like um, direction was to look at other locations for this ground sign. And so if we propose another ground sign at the other entry locations that is elevated above a planter, does the commission agree it needs an exception or could it be approved without an exception on height? I think, it, I think we need to review it. Well, I would like to advise the applicant that he has to apply for an exception versus just coming before this commission and accepting the height as yes, so was proposed. It. The, the, the applicant would have to apply for an exception. That's what I wanted to confirm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That goes Thank back you. to Mr. Lamon, please. Thank you. All right. Um, I down to want to Nicole. remind the commission that we're uh, 15 minutes behind. Oh, not good. Next item is item number two. This is for 920 Summit Road.
This is project design approval being requested. Project requires substantial conformance determination and requires compliance with Planning Commission Resolution Number 035-09. The project was last reviewed by HLC on January 15th, 2014. Do I have those um, comments? Those minutes? Uh, those minutes. Somebody have them? <laughs> Unaltered. <laughs> there you go. Very funny. Do you want disclosures before or after you read the minutes? Yes, please. Okay, so um, I just want to disclose that I was not attending or you know present okay. at the last meeting. That will be a, that will be mentioned. Right, but I did. Uh, review the video as Very well good. as the minutes and then I also wanted to say that in my past and prior work experiences I worked extensively with this client but I haven't been working with them in over five years so okay. I just so to no money has trans um, exactly. acted in over two years yep okay um, it was last reviewed on January 15th 2014 it was a concept review comments only um, go ahead Mr. Hernandez the Commission is generally in favor of the revised proposal. The project appears to be in conformance to what was previously, uh, excuse me, previously proposed. The size, bulk, and scale are acceptable. The design is sensitive to the environment, the setting, and to the character of the site. The proposed Hispanic architecture is not referential enough to the original building. The proposal needs to emulate the original architecture. Refine the east elevation of the pool house snack shack to make it more in keeping with the original main building. The proposed cart storage, north and south elevations in particular, have an unbroken ridge and the architecture needs to be broken up. The symmetry of the east-west elevation of the cart barn should be more refined. A landscape plan is needed. Mahan abstained from commenting. Winnick was absent but had reviewed the um, tapes and the minutes. Go ahead with your presentation, introduce yourselves, and try and keep it as brief as possible. Thank you. My name is Steve Welton. I work for Suzanne Ellich Planning and Permitting. We're the planning agent for the applicant. Welcome. I'm Ken Alperstein from Pinnacle Design. We're the landscape architect for the project. Welcome. Rob Yeager with Marsh and Associates. We're the architect of record for the project. Welcome. Henry Lenny, Henry Lenny Design Studio. No, I don't know about you, and but <laughs> you're welcome always. And behind us is Bill Medell, who's the project manager for Taiwaner Hotels and Resorts. Welcome. Um, just to recap, we're at, as you mentioned, we came to you on uh, January 15th for review prior to getting a substantial conformity determination. After that, we went to Planning Commission and then staff did in fact issue uh, a substantial conformity determination. So uh, that's been done. Um, and so today we're here to present our, um, I'm sorry, following that we went to ABR and received preliminary design approval, project design approval, and we're told to come back for a final on consent. We're hoping to have a similar result today from you. Um, Ken is uh, our landscape architect. The first set of several plans are on um, landscaping. Bill, did you want to have any words before we? Get no, I just would like to say to get to review landscape last time. I really want to start off with the landscape. Okay. Yeah, we did have landscape drawings. We didn't have time to review it. Okay. Yes, I'm sure is. Um, it requires compliance with Planning Commission Resolution Number 3509. What is that resolution? Do we have a copy of it? Do you know what it is? I might have it. Okay, the design review conditions. If you'll um, just bear with me here, I'm going to try and read them quickly. Uh, the project is subject to review and approval of ABR for its area of jurisdiction and HLC for its area of jurisdiction. We shall not grant preliminary approval of the project until the following Planning Commission land use conditions have been satisfied. Design review required. Preliminary habitat restoration and revegetation plan. The restoration goals and approaches identified in the preliminary habitat restoration and revegetation plan prepared by Hunt and Associates shall be followed. Landscape plan, a qualified biologist familiar with invasive non-native plants shall review the plant palettes for all areas, including landscape around the clubhouse fairways and other areas, trees, oak tree removal, uh, all live oaks in excess of three inches in diameter uh, must be mitigated at a 10 to 1, oak tree location, um, pretty much the same thing, which it does not survive three years post-planting, has to be replaced, tree 
relocation the 83 existing trees identified for relocation in the tree protection plan prepared by Duke McPherson and dated February 2009 shall be relocated on the project site and shall be fenced and protected during construction. Um, there shall be tree protection measures listed on the plan. Um, sycamore riparian woodland where feasible restoration shall be enlarged to accommodate more landscape and habitat setback. Um, that's mostly ABR, I'm sorry. HLC, um, well, it was crop You're in scout. a roll, so yeah. in a row. Um, storage bins, date palms, sandstone blocks. Um, sandstone blocks reuse on site the sandstone blocks from the demolished uh, tennis court retaining wall. Date palms reta retain either in place or move to another location on the property. Materials, finished materials for the remodeled swimming pool terrace shall be referential to the nearby clubhouse. So um, I'd like to, we just a minute. I'd like to make a comment if I might. It, it would be helpful if we have a, a a planning commission resolution that we know what's in it. If we have to find uh, approval on this project, and, and this this is an example of what we need to know beforehand, not yeah. just me now, quickly well, trying to read respect, it. Not with your reading, but it should no, come I, out. I, and, I can't. And I mean, we need to know these things, okay. and we're not being told. All right, continue, please. My pleasure. Ken, before you get, just to address those issues, uh, we did submit um, letters from the historian from Post Hazeltine, who are here, here today also, I should have mentioned. Mm -hmm. They reviewed the architecture and, and make sure that we're in conformance with the Secretary of Interior standards. Uh, Larry Hunt is our wildlife biologist. He submitted um, um, a report confirming that our uh, landscaping that was proposed and the plant headless. palette suggested yeah. by our landscape yeah. architect conforms with uh, the requirements of the uh, Planning Commission, uh, bike parking is shown on here. We do intend to use, the, at the original part of the project, an entire sandstone wall was proposed to be removed. Now only a very small portion of it because of the substantial conformity determination is going to be removed, but we are going to reuse that where possible. And uh, although it does say 83 trees, that was of the original application. We're down to, I think, 43 Four. site-wide being removed, and then as far as the date palm tree, I think one or two are being removed, but they're going to be in the same they're general location. Well, they're re just relocated, not removed. Yeah, right. the tree, mm -hmm. yeah, you stated relocated, not removed. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Commissioner, Chairman, uh, Chairman's Commissioners, staff, thank you for having us. Um, I would like to talk about the purview of what the areas that we're looking at today. I think the beauty of most of what it is, we're showing in the landscape designs for the clubhouse area is that 90% of the material stays in place as far as the trees. So as we come up, the historic date palms, the Canary Island date palms that are on each side of the street and coming up are existing. And in fact, what we're doing is re relocating some from the golf course that have to be moved to enhance the entrance. So the existing trees on this side, the existing trees in here, and the existing trees on here all stay in place. All the parking lot trees stay in place, and additional uh, day palms that we're relocating from the golf course will enhance. The, so the symbols; these are the new symbols of the enhanced uh, of the new relocated palms versus the existing palms. All the trees in front of the building all stay in place, remain as is. So really, the only landscaping that we're really talking about within the preview of the front of the building is accentuating the ground plan. And mm -hmm. so we've looked at the some of the old historic photos and have tried to simplify and come up with some accent materials, especially accenting the front doors to the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the secondary entr the entrance to the um, uh, ballroom pavilion. We'll do something ex there, but keeping the rest of it in the front of the building is more just sort of backbone, I uh, would say old fashioned, you know, whether they're camellias or, or, you know, just simple material to really keep the building as our strong, the, the simplicity of the building. Uh, really takes care of the whole front of the building. So really you're seeing everything, the, the main focal point of the trees uh, existing in place and just then uh, accentuating the ground plan. The pool area, as we've talked about, is being relocated. So we're tr taking the old pool area and turning it into an event lawn area. Uh, we've surrounded it with a few flowering trees, a uh, hedge around it to sort of confine a uh, little stage area, and I think this is a you know going to be a very simple but elegant. Still gives very beautiful long range views. Uh, ability probably you know if they in the future may tent 
uh, you know, for events and stuff like that, but just a very simple lawn turf area. Uh, one of the comments in the, um, actually I apologize, but we need to bring up one other drawing real quick, because we, in the last couple of days, made one last. And one of the comments that was brought up and discussed was the, con uh, the importance of keeping the existing well uh, site location, that uh, this is an existing, I guess, historic uh, wishing well, and so we wanted to show that that was going to be remaining in place and how that was tied into the landscaping of the existing turf area out uh, behind the clubhouse area. Uh, cart staging area was all kept to a minimum, and we've softened it with some landscaping, but done, given some overflow turf areas for carts to expand, but for the most part, they will be kept under uh, you know, in the in this cart staging area, and the pool area itself will be done more. It's mostly hardscape. Will be accented with pots and uh, plant material. Okay. The uh, <coughs> new club, the new cart barn area, will be landscaped as uh, and softened as much as possible with within the confines of the fire marshals. <laughs> Obviously, we will have less trees around it just from the from the requirements of what the setbacks on the fire marshal. But we've come up with some screening uh, iron pieces with vines and stuff like that to soften the view uh, from the golf course. Okay. Okay. That concludes your presentation. Yeah. Unless okay. you'd like to talk anything about lighting and plant material, uh, um, which is all. I, I I I've looked at the palette. I'm okay. familiar with that. Why don't you talk about lighting if that's okay. something? Yeah, because that was one comment also that came up from your comments was in the original designs. So uh, it's page eleven. I don't know if L one one point one or L I one point one. So in our initial lighting study, what we want to do is try and get as much ambient lighting from up lights. I know that one of the comments I saw on, your, on the latest comments was that the up lights not, might not be exactly historical in nature and that we should watch the use of the up lights. Now, there are plenty of them out there as we speak. We've tried to minimize the post lights, but as of right now, the lighting is very uh, stark at best in, at the country club, and I think it's unsafe. And so. We've come up with a couple of options looking at the historic lighting on the building, which would be these more lantern type lights. We've also come up with a secondary light, which I prefer more, which would be more shield, uh, a light more shield on a post so that you didn't see the hot spot of the bulb. And I know it's not as historically correct, but I think from longer range views from possible homeowners uh, or, or any other view that you don't get the hot spot, I would prefer a, a more shielded light, but we would also uh, listen to your suggestions as far as the potential post lights. And if the direction was that the ambient up lighting of the trees was not acceptable, we could easily do more uh, post lighting to get the, the, the light we need for members to get around the parking lot. Okay. So, all right. Is this, that's current there. What's out there? No, what's current out there right now is a very 1960s three tier pagoda. Pagoda, uh, very. It has nothing to do with the. Okay. All right. So, um, let's go on then to the architecture. Okay. Let's fold that in maybe for now. Thanks, Bill. What sheet do you want to start on? Let's go to a 3.7, which is at the very back. Is this the next? Uh, You're getting a 3.7. Yeah, yeah, it's the set you have there. Okay. So we are going to the sheet. Here you go. A 3.7. Everybody get there before you start with the presentation, please. All right, go ahead. Okay, Please. members of the commission, thank you for, for having us. Um, we uh, came before the commission uh, recently or previously and received comments as to the architecture, the articulation of the cart storage facility and the pool facility structures. And uh, uh, we were asked to revisit the, that articulation to make them more referential to the clubhouse uh, and consistent with the uh, um, colonial, the Spanish colonial uh, revival style. 
Um, so in doing so, we've, the plans that you have in front of you have been updated based on some uh, correspondence and coordination with uh, Mr. Henry Lenny, who uh, assisted in providing some insight as to the appropriate historical elements. Um, and so these elevations reflect that coordination both for the uh, cart storage facility, which primarily involved some breaking up of the massing and some incorporating of some uh, some other elements that would tie it uh, a little bit better to the clubhouse structure. And there's also some subtle modifications to the pool uh, building elevations, which can be found on the following page, A3.8. As to the particulars of those uh, modifications, I'd like to let Mr. Rennie uh, describe some of the uh, specific details that have been incorporated to make them more referential. Well, let me show you some sketches. This is solid transition, and, and after studying, could you two switch places actually? Because so we need to get it on the camera, and I don't want Mr. Lenny to break his shoulder stretching. I don't want that. I may never recover. Uh, these are some of the sketches that we started off with. In fact, it's gone through a quiet transition, um, and. These sketches were generated after seeing some samples of what Goodhue has done. I, mm -hmm. I mean, quite frankly, I, and in my opinion, Goodhue was the greatest American architect. Uh, and uh, I had the great honor, Bill and I, of working on his personal house uh, many, many years ago. And what I learned about Goodhue is the simplicity, awesome simplicity. Uh, if you look at the um, library in Los Angeles, the public mm -hmm. library, if you look at Bubble Park, and also if you look at uh, the, the clubhouse itself, we kind of drew from that, and these are just historic photographs of some of the projects that he had done here in Santa Barbara, as well as in other parts of the United States, including Hawaii. But uh, uh, it, it, was, it was everything about Goodhue was simplicity. And, and everything about Goodhue was the form and the detailing. Mm -hmm. uh, another quick example of a house that he did. And also, the, in, in many, many mm -hmm. cases, uh, he would articulate the entrance or have mm -hmm. some feature. That was, again, very simple, or oh, as elaborate as we saw in the tower of the clubhouse here. Mm -hmm. um, but it all follows pretty much the same uh, vocabulary. The uh, hip roofs, in many cases, uh, high-pitched, uh, 5 to 12, and so on. So we kind of took our hint from here. Mm -hmm. This building is it's technically a garage. And so uh, there, uh, we thought, well, let, let's go ahead and simplify the form, which we did. Uh, but the, the details of what needed to happen is that the windows needed to be recessed, at least 12 inches. Um, this is just a ceremonial piece mm -hmm. in the center uh, with steel windows. And then, of course, we have the, all the doors which are slab doors, but they needed to be articulated with one bias. That has worked very successfully in the past, including for segmented um, mm -hmm. garage doors, which is indicated uh, here in the drawing. So let me just take you a little bit through uh, some of the modifications of the elevations uh, that, that Rob and I worked on. Uh, and and uh, this is um, this is the east elevation. I'll go quickly. This is the rear of the building. Now that's simple. Hmm. That is simple. Also oh, tucked between the tennis courts. Right. Yeah. The, no, I'm okay. <laughs> trying to add some levity here. <laughs> you did. Um, <laughs> and then, as far as the other buildings, there were minor changes, but again, all having to do with the simplification of of the entire scheme. Uh, again, it, it, it was critically pool. pool. This is pool. Uh, we moved to the pool building now. Correct. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, right. I'm, just, I'm just giving you a general uh, idea of how we simplify the building here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now we came up with a uh, another solution, which is even simpler than that. 
and let me show you that. And that solution really does have to do with just keeping it as a flat roof. Uh, again, all, in no windows at all. Uh, it, the, what you see here is some wrought iron grills uh, or turn posts, wood turn posts, like in this case right here. Uh, the height of the plate, of course, raises from 10 feet to 14 feet because of the parapets that are required. Uh, for that, but that was another uh, another possible solution. And as far as the other elevations are concerned, there's still a combination of some tile. Uh, and and it's uh, these elevations were really difficult to deal with because, as you can see, without changing the floor plan, we explored a number of possibilities. And again, the idea was just to simplify everything that we have there. Um, and let me just go on by telling you what we're thinking here. The materials, if it is going to be a tile roof, it should be a handmade tile roof, mm -hmm. uh, low fire, uh, oversized, and full barreled. Uh, light fixtures is the Barcelona fixtures that we're proposing, or we can do something else. Uh, the awnings, uh, we have one awning, I believe, and that is between the breezeway. Mm -hmm. And the thought was to use a black and tan awning. There are some pots that we propose to put in plant uh, uh, walls with orange mm -hmm. trees. And if there is to be a steel window, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, <coughs> windows and, and doors, then they should be steel. Mm -hmm. um, and those will be painted the model of the green as usual. Texture and color of all the buildings that we're proposing would match the existing building. So anyway, in a nutshell, um, that's, that, is, uh, that is what we're proposing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lenny. Does that conclude your presentation? Yes, it does. OK, I'll public open comment. public comment. I have one speaker slip, Mr. DeForest. Yes, good afternoon. You have one minute, 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just uh, want to commend, uh, I see uh, the, the flat roofs, flat roof solution, which I think fits much better into uh, the Bertram Goodhue architecture. Any study demonstrates that is extensive use of flat roofs, and there are a couple of pictures here of, the, of houses I've, little resident cottages I found online that have flat roofs that were designed by him, and I brought, and I recall and oh, and for any people who've been to Valverde, my father, who designed the cottages. As additional residents on the Valverde estate saw to it that Goodhue design was replicated by having flat roofs. So please use flat roofs. That will help the help tie in the into the main <coughs> clubhouse building and be reverential to the work of Bertrand Goodhue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. Seeing no other public, I'll close public comment, bring it to the commission for questions, starting with Commissioner Schomburg. Do you have any questions? Uh, well, um, I'm a little confused about the the letter, the addendum letter here. Mm -hmm. um, From Post Hazleton. Right. Please, so it's dated April 15th, and these drawings <coughs> are April 7th. Is, did Post Hazleton review the April 7th drawings? Either Pam or Tim or Steve, Mr. Welton, somebody. These are questions, so. They saw all the words. Um, Tim Hazeltine with Post Hazeltine Associates. Um, for the roof of the golf cart storage building, we were presented the option to review with the roof, with the gabled. Or hip roof, pardon, hip roof. the hip roof, and not for, for the for the yes. 
Those are the ones that were submitted for our review. Okay. And we recommended actually that the roof line be restudied, okay. which I think was consistent with comments that have been made by HLC member at the last time it came through. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Um, and that brings me to the next. Can we see the old, the previous south elevation? I, mean, there, I wish you would have done that, frankly, on this drawing. There's plenty of room here on this sheet to show the previous design. Do we have that set? I, I guess I'm getting I Is want to see set? what the response it's not, it's not, was. Okay, she's getting it for us. Oh, it's getting it for us. Mr. Busk is getting it for us. That's my fault, Chris. I just wanted to simplify it and have fewer. There was so much going on, so many pages. We had 30 Okay, pages. thank well, you, Mr. Welton. That goes to this. The, I'll move on to an, uh, while Mr. Busk does that. Um, what are you proposing? I mean, this is a preliminary design review approval. Is it this? Is this what you want to get approved here today? We are really here to show you the two options. Uh, uh, what we prefer to have is the flat roof. And, 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 and the flat roof, the reason for it is because it would compete far less with the main building. Why? Well, I have, I'm not really asking about the design at this point. Oh, I mean, okay. I, they're both beautiful, but that's sort of a side note at this point. But um, I'm just concerned now we're structurally in the review. You're going to have to come back again right. and propose what you're proposing. Right. Because you're, you're asking for, like, too much feedback on that's too many different review. options. That's not preliminary design. And, and, and I'll answer that. This is the, this is the project we want you to, to look at and approve today. Or preliminary design approval. This I mean, this type of market review after, I guess. But then, why was all the rest of this stuff? Presented? That was just that was something that we wanted you to take a look at. Um, if that was something that we should kind of maybe kind of if you wanted to go to a redesign, we could look at that. But this is what we want you to to focus on today. If we give preliminary, excuse me, project design approval to this then, then you're bound to this mm -hmm. and you can't do this. Well, they could come review for a well, subsequent review. It's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not the right <laughs> way to do it. And, and, and so, it's, so I think I think today, Mr. Medell, you're not going to get project design approval, but you're going to get some direction from us on which would be the more appropriate style okay. of architecture. That's, that's um, fine. I, I don't think it's um, prudent or um, wise of us to give PDA project design approval on something like this um, if that's not what you're going to do. Well, that's, that was the point of the question. Right. I, I tried to distill it. So, um, I mean, we can move on to other questions. Okay. And Ms. DeBus can bring the other four okay. comments, I guess. Yes, she's that working. That's fine. Okay. Did you have any questions, Commissioner Drew? Uh, no, I'm even more confused than I usually am. Um, no. So you, I know. <laughs> it's awful. So you would prefer to have the flat roof design. That's, is that my understanding? Originally, that's what we were hoping because this is what's there today. I, I brought a photos of the existing cart barn. And this is really a cart storage facility. And I didn't want to get into a lot of this, uh, this type of architecture for something that was just to be a very simple building for, to store carts. Oh, that's lovely. Um, but it, this is completed, and I'd like you to, if, if this building is something that we would really like to consider originally, but um, we started going and started going into this direction. I think so, I understand the problem. Okay. So um, the, 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 the pool question. buildings, I think we're fine with, uh, subject to your comments and, and, and things like that, <laughs> the proposed pool buildings and architecture. Um, this is something we're still not, we're struggling a little bit okay. with. Okay, so that's, okay. so you're still, okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner um, Dre, do you have any more questions? No, that's it. Thank you. Commissioner <laughs> LaVoy. Do you have, a, do you have a, the elevations without, not obscured by, by entourage? By the trees. trees. I think and and a, a, a warm oh, body would be that. nice to give scale to the drawing mm -hmm. rather than all the trees. Sorry. <laughs> I was just trying to get the... Responding to his. Thank you, Henry. Sketch of the other Where's the piece? sketch, Henry? Yeah, but you want, Bill wants to see the I want to see a body. But I think he was asking but about this that, presentation. That, that one. So it would be this drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want me to get this out of yeah. here for a second? He doesn't want to yeah. see the landscape. Yeah. We'll bring these back in a minute. <coughs>
Okay, we do have the originals <laughs> if anybody wants to look at those there behind us. <laughs> All right. There, so, Commissioner Lavoie, are Thank you, you getting your question answered yep. there? Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Rias, any questions? Um, I'm trying to think how to word it as a question. <laughs> Mm. I, I think that, um, well, it's going to be a comment, sorry. I think the, the light fixtures are something that just didn't fit. And I think that needs, for, I think that needs further work. That's one of the things that stuck with my mind. Okay. Commissioner um, Winnick. We're on question still, right? So I'm sorry to belabor this. We're being, and I, did, I, I sort of heard the cross conversation. Actually, when I asked Commissioner Lavoie, you, you, at this point, you think we're reviewing this with the pitched roofs, correct? Is that what you oh, think? I think we're. Uh, I'm open to make comments about it all. Okay. <laughs> so we're okay. So we're looking at both. So I, I'm going to ask questions about the flat roof because I think I understand the pitched roof option. So the question on the flat roof is, what is the material of the roofing? Because you will see this building from up above. Uh, so what are you proposing for the roofing General, material? There's two options for that. And one of them is a, uh, uh, a smoke gray color, the, which I would prefer in this case. The is other, that like gravel over <laughs> paper? Yes. Okay. No, it's going to be a cooler of... It's going to be a plastic membrane. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is this a torch down, or is this going to have a ballast as in tiles on top or something? To, to the current energy code, it's going to be a cool roof. So it's going to be white or gray. Mm -hmm. It's like, dirty after a year. There's a tennis courts above. I, I think you're right, Bill. Course. I think it's probably going to be gray. I, uh, the other option I was going to say is terracotta, but I don't think that, that's going to make it. So you won't necessarily see it from the tennis courts, but you go up from the mm -hmm. tennis courts still. And from the neighborhood you're talking about? Mm -hmm. From the neighborhood, yes, exactly. Summit yeah. Road. Summit Road, yeah. yeah. Romero even, maybe. Um, okay, that was my... Then, okay. the, then the other question I just had was, uh, following up on Commissioner Rios's comment about the lights, um, in the parking lot you showed us a shielded light as an option, um, sorry, you yeah. showed us. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the question really is, is whether or not you've found any historically more sensitive, let's say, or more appropriate shielded light right, options. Yeah. Come on up, Come please. on up. Sorry to make you guys sh shifting chairs here. <clears throat> we use, and again, it's, it's, I understand it's not perfect. We use something like this at Shady Canyon. It's very similar. We can get the exact fixture. But again, at this point, we're just trying to get yeah. you to get an idea of at least our thought, the design standpoint, anytime you can hide the, the bulb underneath the fixture and not seeing the hot spot of the fixture, it's a better way to go. And mm -hmm. they, Shady Canyon, they use something very similar to that. It's this very Spanish-style uh, architecture. There's a little bit more detail on it, um, a little softer. Than, you know, um, so in that next stage, we would, if that was something that would, you thought was be allowable, we would get the exact fixture and start going that direction versus what I would say is definitely a more historical, you know, uh, you know, set type of picture. So. Um, question? Yeah, Commissioner Rios, sure. What is a, what is a, uh, a Barcelona light fixture? It's a custom manufactured fixture um, that Mr. Lenny often specifies. And uh, you see Do we have a picture of it? Yeah. Yeah, it's on that was a Henry's drawing. drawing. Yeah. It's on where? On Henry's drawing. Yeah. It was a drawing somewhere. You'll find that in El Paseo. Yeah. And, and okay. Okay. It's all over town. Yeah. Uh, parking. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. Thank you. But that's for the building. building. That's for the building. That's for the building. I'm done with my questions. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Mahan, questions. Right. No questions. Commissioner Sharp. No questions. Um, quick question for <laughs> um, how is up lighting um, the trees conforming to the dark sky ordinance? Well, the LED lights don't, uh, at least from San Diego and everywhere else we've done it, have, uh, they're such, they put out such a small amount of light that they, uh, at least in San Diego, I'm not sure here, uh, they don't uh, count, I mean, they, they don't put enough lumens at 10 watts to cause issues with the okay. dark sky ordinance. Also, they'd be shielded and put at such an angle. Okay. Yeah, but um, you give nice reflective light. Next question is, did you um, uh, collate your um, or compare your plant palette with the um, EPV design 
um, plant palette? I believe we've chosen, it's been, yeah, I believe so, yes. It has all been chosen. It's been gone through the biologists and okay. I've written that and we've gotten comments that it's all been uh, matching and approved from, from different uh, okay. All right, comments then. Commissioner Schallenberger? Well, I think that there has been some, I'll just talk about the cart storage. I think I made the comment originally about the long expanse of roof when it was just a gabled roof previously. So I, I see that there's been a different, uh, different piece of architecture implemented for the articulated area, but, um, and, that, and that looks nice. Um, and the hips definitely help. And I think the, the raw image is actually better uh, it gives a better idea uh, of the scale and and proportion and massing and it just the hips alone broke up the expanse so I think the applicant did respond um, adequately and I, I, you know at this point I could support either approach I mean I I guess I was a little <laughs> confused what to vote on but um, I, I I guess we could look at voting on project design approval for everything but and then have them come back for if they want to substitute I, I don't I don't know structurally how that works but um, but I could support either okay and the the other pieces of uh, cart store are the um, pool house and snack bar I, I think those are all completely appropriate okay Commissioner Drury. Mr. Chair, I have further questions. Um, not very many. Um, between, from the ground to the to the bottom of the roof, the eave, how, how tall is that? In the drawing this in so the one from, this, with which yes, plate height. That right. Ten plate feet. height. Ten feet. Ten feet. So those are pretty big people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 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 sure oh, yeah, you are. I deal I deal with this scale stuff all the time no, in, you're, in you're, landscape painting. Those and, might be doesn't it seem like four feet? Well, in any case, yeah. Okay, so, okay. All right, thank you. Um, so my comments uh, would be, I would support either design. I, I favor the flat roof. I, I think that's uh, really quite lovely. I would like to see on the north elevation, I would like to see some small, like a little, that little window uh, near the chimney on the, on, the, on, the other, on the other one, maybe some placed properly on that north elevation just to... You mean not? Somewhere over, right below your, right above your thumb. Somewhere right there. Or uh, but other than that, I, I find that, um, mm -hmm. I find that um, really, really lovely. I, I like that kind of simplicity. And I, I think the uh, architecture of the pool house and the other buildings are appropriate. I, I do have some questions uh, about the landscape. When you say small flowering tree, that's just, to be determined later, and we'll, yeah, that will be presented to us. Right. The next okay. Time All right. Full set of work. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Schomburg. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. I, I do have a bit of an issue with um, the proposal that had just openings with grills only and not windows. I, I mean, this this idea of form only and no function is is a little bit of a problem for me, and I. I, honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't want light into that into that space as well. But um, oh, they uh, they're, are open. they're open, but oh, they are not okay. Um, I, it they're looked like they were plaster behind. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. All right, thank you, thank you. Commissioner Lavoie, comments. Um, I, I appreciate the um, the application of the uh, design principles of the main building, and I, I much prefer the the flat roof solution, even with a gray cool roof on top. Um, it's going to be viewed far enough away that I don't find it objectionable. Um, I, I, I like the simplicity of it. I uh, also like the simplicity of the uh, pool snack bar building. Um, what I have an issue with is uplighting. Um, I think it's inappropriate in Santa Barbara and particularly on this site. Um, it's in a primarily residential neighborhood, bordering a residential neighborhood. Um, the, whatever light the building gets will be washed from the open-sided lanterns that we use everywhere, um, and that's desirable. 
to some degree within the limits of, of the lighting ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, additional uplighting of landscape and stuff is just not what we do here. Excuse me. And that, that light, that lantern or that light fixture that you've shown is not appropriate in Santa Barbara. You're speaking about the pole light? The pole light mm -hmm. with the gooseneck. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> That's all. Okay, Commissioner Arias. Um, I, I have a question. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, about... you did that whole backwards. <laughs> know, Started I with know. a comment. I know. Okay. Patience, son. That's Patience. Right. Um, it mentioned, I was trying to take everything down, and, and uh, the sandstone box and the screen for the backflow valve and things like that. Has that been accomplished? Yes. And how are the sandstone box being used and retained, et cetera? Go ahead. Right, the sandstone wall, for the most part, is staying in place now. Whatever, I'm sorry, what? For the most part, it is staying in place. In other Thank words, you. we're salvaging much more of it. Any little bit that's uh, left over, if we go back to uh, my drying center, right at the there, right here, this wall will stay in place. Right. Okay. Yes. So they're, right. they're not generating we're as not, much of the sandstone. Right. Right. All right. If and any is generated, a uh, little seat wall. Uh, right in this area as a okay. focal point, and we would use it there. Okay, okay and the backflow is how old? Yeah, backflow is, uh, we have one uh, piece uh, transformer here that's being protected, and then the backflow preventer over here. Okay, the now I have another question about the flat roof. Have you run this by the fire department? Or any? That would be fire, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no, the we reason why I ask <laughs> is the flat roofs collect a lot of material. Mm -hmm and they have to be maintained and cleaned, otherwise it become a big fire hazard. And I just wondered if you've done any discussion about that. Not, at, not. not at this time, but okay. they've been pretty restrictive with us on the landscaping around, yeah, well, no I matter what design that. we you do. Said yes. that, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, my comments are essentially that I like what you've done with the pool and the, um, <laughs> the snack area, and I think you've been very sensitive about that. I am not fond of the light fixtures, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, I, 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 have, I have some reservations about the flat roof, particularly the impact of the down, but that could be probably mitigated by significant trees. Mm -hmm. But then again, none of the fire department doesn't like them, so. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, I think what you've done is, is really a nice addition. And thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Winnick, comments? Okay, um, thank you. Uh, just, I want to just make one observation between the drawings, just because it, it just kind of want to alert it for going forward. And I guess I get to compliment you, Mr. Winnick. Is your yeah, microphone clear? Yeah. Yeah. It's just not close enough. Okay. Anyway, I want to compliment you on your smaller drawings. It doesn't look to me like the proportions on those, but I was just comparing them between these and those, that they are um, accurately uh, represented in the larger scale drawings uh, proportions. They look like they're off a little bit. So I just want to make sure that as this gets, presumably it gets project design approval, that the proportions of the drawings that you're doing really get respected, that the, the proportions are right. That some of these things look a little wider, some of the arches look a little narrower. Um, and actually because of that, even though I know we're not in questions, I'd like to just flip to the drawings of the, of the, whatchamacallit, of the other little buildings, just to compare them, because we've never looked at this page during this presentation. <laughs> and just to have those plus these, just to see if they're pretty much the same. In some ways, I think we probably should have asked for that as part of the presentation. Um, so I'm going to say that that's probably corresponding yeah. with that one. Actually, that's the that's a comfort station. So the pool buildings are all reflected in those elevations. Thank you for that help. Mm -hmm. Right. So for instance, this window is different than that window. Um, so I think I just want to mm -hmm. suggest that perhaps what we want to do is we want to make sure that the when we give projects design approval, if we, if, if we do, that it incorporates these drawings that we've been looking at rather than the ones that are the more architecturally drawn ones. So I just wanted, that's my biggest comment. And I think the project that you've presented is very nice. I can support the flat roofs. And just by the way, since nobody's commented on it yet, I'll give you a thumbs up as well on the tan and black awnings. Since it's only appearing once, I think it'll be rather nice and attractive. So, thank you. 
Where's the fan? Is it my turn? Yes, yes go ahead, Mr. Meehan. Where's the fan of black awning on there? Uh, it's on the pool building. It's on the pool building. Oh, oh it's on the pool building. Right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> it's in between. <laughs> the, the, um, we need to put I mean, I think that, that uh, I don't know what to do. I've got this on, and it doesn't <laughs> seem to work. It's on. It's, it's not on. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to pull this out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry. No, there's just, just too many drawings. way too many drawings. <coughs> Here we go. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Okay, the, the uh, I mean, if we go to, with the tile roof, it sounds to me like a lot of people support the flat roof. I think that's that's an important decision to make. If we go with the tile roof, I, you know, I like the tile roof, and I know that from the houses up on Summit and the Ramada are going to be happier looking down at tile than at a flat gray roof. On the other hand, it may very well be that if if we go with the flat roof and if the applicant likes the flat roof, they have to come back because that's not what was proposed today. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to see some photographs from Summit Road up there at the top. Well, you know, what, what, is, what is going to be the impact of the flat roof from these uh, people up there in those uh, very wonderful uh, Carlton Winslow houses? Actually, I think there's a couple, three of them up there. Uh, so we, I'd le like to, to see what that would look like. Some trees would, would help to mitigate, but, but as uh, Judy said, we're not supposed to have trees around the building. So uh, I know Henry put a lot of palm trees there, and that would be nice. Um, I think that, that if we go with the flat roof, I would like to see some variation in the, in the parapet, that it wouldn't all have to be one straight line. I think that the smaller buildings of, it makes sense that they're a little bit lower, and then the, the, then the main building would step up a little bit, and it would, have, it, it would soften the, uh, the extent of the building. Um, I also feel that these buttresses are very contemporary in the way that they line up with the wall rather than a buttress being separated I, I, uh, you know, from, from what it's buttressing. And uh, in, the, uh, in the picture where the buttresses are, where's the picture where the buttresses are? Well, even take this one right here. Um, where the carts drive in and out. I think functionally those buttresses would be held back. Uh, they would not be uh, right up to the hands of the door. I think that's, there's, a, there's a chance, you know, for bumping and scraping and stuff like that. Buttresses, I think they should... I like the buttresses, and I like the fact that they're rounded at the top, um, but I don't think they should be so brutal in terms of, uh, of the lining up with, with the element behind them. I, I like the spindles, and those, those would just be open. Oh, yeah, and th and that's really good for ventilation of a cart barn to have right. to have the open uh, the open uh, windows because they do it does generate uh, hydrogen inside of the cart barns. Um, I noticed that the pictures you passed around of of uh, Bertrand's house, or maybe I guess it was uh, Kellum who passed them around. Yeah, yeah. They they were a little more uh, gentle in terms of dealing with the top of the parapet. Either it was they had some tile on the top of the parapet, or they had uh, a little uh, molding or something like that. It's not quite so so. Uh, I know you're going towards simplicity, but um, maybe this is too simple. Um, so if, if we go toward the, the flat roof, personally, I, 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 don't, I have no problem with the flat roof if it, if it isn't going to be objectionable from the view of the houses above. I, I think we need to be shown that it isn't going to be. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Sharp, any other comments? Just a couple. Um, I generally agree with what Bill Mahan has just said. The parapet needs to be broken up. I think the entrance parapet could extend above, as you have done on the tile roof, and uh, that would go a long way to identifying the entrance as well as providing a relief at the right location. Mm -hmm. um, and I am concerned that the, as Bill has said, looking down upon this from the homes above, we would have to see some photographs as to, and, and a sample of the 
material as to what it would be. It will gather a lot of eucalyptus uh, leaves and branches and palm fronds and everything else in the high winds as we had yesterday, which is uh, certainly they have the maintenance center to take care of it, but they have to have easy access up, I think, to, take, to do that. The, the lighting, um, I agree with the comments, it needs to be rethought out a la Santa Barbara. And uh, I think the pool structure is just simple and fine and needs to be clarified as to the window size. One window size looks good and the other one yeah. is out of proportion just on the two sketches. So you can refine that easily. Mm -hmm. That's all. <coughs> okay, um, Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Dury. I was just looking at these at the buttresses. Uh, Commissioner May, I was talking about if they were if they were pulled away from the the windows that they're right up against by even six inches, just pulled out. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be a solution That's actually a to break idea. up that hole. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I agree. Okay. Um, Landscape. Um, I think that the palette is um, a little water intensive. Um, we we need to scale that back, um, be more drought tolerant. The use of lawn um, where it's not necessary is problematic. Um, the whole golf course is lawn. I get that. Um, and you mentioned some event spaces and some cart overflow um, using the lawn, but. Um, as you know, lawn is very um, high water using, so um, I, I need you to take a look at that and um, try to be more um, water-wise um, for Santa Barbara. Um, I'm going to try to summarize the comments then. Um, the eight and a half by excuse me, the eight and a half by eleven elevations are what the commission is commenting on. Um, the hip roof helps with the requested roof breakup. The simplicity is appreciated. Uplighting is inappropriate in this neighborhood and on this site. The pole light that is proposed is not appropriate. The pool house and snack shack are nicely designed. The tan and black awning is appropriate. Provide photos from Summit. Road and Rometto Road, looking at the cart barn. The use of buttresses should be more traditional and less brutal. Open fenestration with bars is very appropriate to the style of arch spindles. spindles. Spindles, thank spindles, you. Yes. Open fenestration with spindles is very appropriate to the style of architecture. And then lastly, the flat roof solution is preferred with a gray roof. Provide some variation in the parapet. Study Bertram's parapets for that variation. Best I could do. Okay. So, Mr. Like Chair, this? I'd like to make the motion. Okay. Good. But with, with a couple <laughs> tweaks, little Go changes. For <laughs> First off, on the uh, reference to the 8.5 by 11, let's also say and, and 11 by 17 because some of them were larger. Okay. And then the second thing is I would actually like to give the applicant a little more. Um, leeway on the design of the buttresses. I don't necessarily think that this space between the buttress and the arch necessarily will be the right solution. I'd like to just say study the buttresses. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I said use of buttresses should be more mm -hmm. traditional and less brutal. Or just you want to say... How about just more traditional and study? I think okay. saying the brutal is maybe sure. loading it a little bit. <laughs> okay, study the use of buttresses <laughs> to be more traditional. <laughs> okay, thank you. Appreciate that. And, uh, and oh, sorry. Th that's fine. Th weeks, that's great. Right? And do we want two weeks? Okay, two weeks continuance. Motion by Winnick, a second by Drury. Um, under I would discussion. Like to, under discussion on the, regarding the roof, the flat roof, I think um, access to the roof is going to be important, how you're going to get a, up, up into there. Yeah, you may have to do something that changes architecturally the building slightly. We don't expect to see roof equipment up there either. Well, <laughs> uh, you would, they probably wouldn't need it. But, no, I know, but, but I just need to say it. <laughs> All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, can I sort through those so you. that we keep one set okay, and give you back a set? Something that so, says yeah. well, no, you, can, I mean, you may have doubles. I just okay. want to look through um, and just take one of these.
Well, you may want to sit on that. Huh? Well, I guess you're right. Okay. We've got everything. I am we'll going to call a 10 minute recess. Oh, here's the picture. Yeah, and and I can get back. You can get back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I stay home by my radio, but I'm satisfied. 2559 Cuesta del Sol. Mr. Hernandez. Thank you, Chair Suiting. Um, I, I reviewed the report um, as well as Dan, and we support the report's conclusions that the project meets the state CEQA guidelines for MEA. We do have some concerns about the compatibility of the steel trees and decking, but we feel that that is something be, to be compatible with the EPV guidelines and be, can be discussed in design review and not so much of a CEQA issue. And we did also, because these are conceptual, lots of the drawings we've seen are conceptual, there's lots of references that they'll be coming back for review to see if addendums are necessary because it's hard to say if the final details will meet CEQA when they're not ready yet. We right. haven't seen them. So it's a little bit cart before the horse and how to address that. So lots of it can be discussed in design review. And okay. if there's changes in design review, the report can be okay. revised. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, but it's not insurmountable. Um, are you finished? Okay, I'll open public comment. I have one speaker slip from Mr. Kellum DeForest for this item. Mr. DeForest. Yes, I hope you saw my comments. I'm sorry, the comments got spelt wrong, but my comments and which I would hope could be added or is an addendum to the report, which is an excellent report. I never saw so much. I think this is almost one of the largest reports I've seen. And, and I do, I would like, and now I will try and do further research on my father's Lockwood de Forest contributions, landscape contributions. I know they were many, and uh, I don't know why the documentation either has been misplaced or disappeared over time. So I hope those could be that his contribution could be included in future. So, I mean, I don't know how these master plans become history. So please allow me to provide more information. Then the, uh, I would like some comment on the tile, especially the t tile that my mother, Ms. Elizabeth DeForest, gave to the museum at about, about around 18, 1980, and how, what they feel, she, uh, since they're not part of the uh, period of significance, how significant are they today? That, this is especially the uh, tile that's, there are other places, but there's tile around the, uh, the tiled water fountain across from uh, Fleischmann, and are they, is the re, Vamping, redoing of the restrooms going to affect that water fountain. That isn't spelled out. Uh, then <coughs> I think it would be interesting if there were some uh, documentation, some study, and maybe the post Hazeltine have actually done one on the uh, now Woodland Quota property, which wasn't, just has become Woodland through the years of none, of none since the uh, Hoffman 
no longer the Hoffman estate no longer sold off that property and no longer kept it kept it up. So it would be interesting to know where the where the cottages were and where the pathways were. And it does not need to affect it's just for historical reasons, not for its impact on the a woodland area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeForest. Um, Mr. Chair, Mr. DeForest, Let before you leave, yeah. um, is the fountain you're talking, the fountain tiles you're talking about on uh, figure 22 in the report? You want to show it to me? If I could get the uh, city TV to zoom in, no, please. That's no, not, that's the wrong that's not the wrong fountain. Wrong fountain. The the one. Figure 19. The one on the, so on the outside yeah. courtyard? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Boyd, figure 19. Figure 19. Figure 19. City TV, please zoom. Okay. Hello. Thank you. That there tile in there. Right yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, I will close public comment. Bring it to the commission. Um, for, uh -oh. Do you want? Do you need to add something? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, maybe respond, uh, yeah. Chair Seating, Commission sure. members, uh, Pamela Post of Post Hazel Town Associates, yeah. and I'd just like to clarify some of. Um, um, Mr. DeForest's uh, comments, and uh, in regard to uh, some of the, you know, the uh, detailed histories of the building descriptions, uh, most of this is addressed in the Phase One report. Uh, the Phase Two is only addressing, of course, you know, the significant issues, and so um, we did include a very detailed uh, history of the building descriptions. Uh, we also. Uh, included a detailed history of the Hoffman property. Um, the tiles are, are mentioned and the significance of the of the uh, antique tiles, which are you know were Turkish tiles from you know 16th uh, century, 16th 17th century. So those were all addressed in in the phase one. Okay. And um, the, just to say to clarify that. And Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Elledge. Suzanne Illich, representing the museum. I also just want to point out that that phase one was approved by the commission in August of 2012. Thank and you. if I could comment on um, Nicole's comment about the, the drawings at the appropriate time, I'd appreciate it. Um, go ahead, Neil. Okay. My understanding um, of the process is that these drawings are sufficient to go through a DART um, review and that they are adequate for um, post Hazeltine to have come to the conclusions that they did in the report. Um, as is typical with any project, ultimately there's going to be more detailed drawings, and those drawings have to be um, reviewed by a qualified person, qualified architectural historian, to ensure that what was assumed in the report based on these drawings gets carried out um, in the same fashion so that the findings remain valid. So I don't think there's an inadequacy of the drawings for purposes of CEQA analysis um, or for the findings that you have to make for this project to proceed on through environmental review. So I just, it sounded like when you said it was unfortunate that there isn't adequate detail, there certainly is adequate detail to take this project through the process, but there isn't adequate detail for you to give project design approval or final approval, which comes after the project is considered by the Planning Commission. So I just, I just wanted to make sure that we are all um, on the same page. <laughs> and perhaps I, I used that term um, incorrectly, but Ms. Um, Hernandez, can you elaborate then and uh, or, or Mr. Gullet and we need some direction from from staff on the adequacy of the report. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, through staff's review of um, both the phase one and phase two historic structures report, we believe the the level of information provided would be adequate for um, staff to complete the environmental analysis for the planning commission, knowing that there's aspects of the project that we don't have yet. So at, at the final approval stage, you'll be looking at more details um, than you have now. Uh, so um, that will be subject to design review um, by this body. It, it may be that additional historic analysis is needed at that time okay. too, and that will That's be what I wanted to a, de a decision first, first um, 
our urban historian, um, Ms. Hernandez, would look at it, uh, and and your board for okay. for concurrence. Okay. Everybody under all the commissioners understand no. that. Yes, um, it's very clear that there okay. are that actually some of the things that weren't understood by the historian are very clearly spelled out that they would be reviewing that detail as it became available. It's very clearly stated in the report in several places. Okay, because yes. I, I, I wanted to state that's why it's clear, spelled out in the report, okay. because those details will be coming back. Perhaps I just and was not clear, and now I am. And, and I just, if I could just add, all of the recommendations in the report have been incorporated into the project description, so we have incorporated all of our historians recommendations into what we are proposing with this project so that's for us to determine all right questions from the commission none yes mr chair commissioner lavoy um on page um i have some for the applicant but they'll come later page 65 pa page what page 65, 65. Um, in the, at the bottom of the page, um, last full paragraph, uh, last um, sentence. Um, Starts with the word moreover. Moreover, dematerializing the structure through the use of natural materials. Um, and then I looked at the, um, the proposal for the tent support. Um, and um, a bronze tree-like form was called out. Was that the natural material that you're referring to, or the paving materials that are around the base of it? Commissioner Lavoy, it's the paving materials and the use of the sandstone-clad back wall that's on the north side of that exhibit. Yes. Yes. Yes, okay, that's how I understood it. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Mm. Oh, on page 72, um, there's a lengthy discussion about the, um, the deck and, um, and some question as to its appropriateness um, for the site. Um, would you have the same opinion of a more natural material constructed terrace area, more consistent with other areas on the site? Such as a... Boulders so and boulders. the paved, flat paved area well, I mean, that I is mean, on the ground. Yeah, so the standards, is that yes, I mean, and, and that is more yeah. compatible with the site rather than yeah. Yes. Uh, we under yes, I understand yes. your point. Yes, that would be also be compatible. Um, there were some constraints in this issue that were, were in regards to um, back charging. There was, and this is an area outside of our expertise, but it was explained to us that. Um, if they take all of the asphalt out underneath where the uh, current terrace is, right. that would backcharge the old sandstone wow. retaining wall in Mission Creek. And also, they were having to stay well away from the root zone of the oak, native oak that's right where the bridge crosses Mission Creek okay. as you come down. And I believe that that is why the decking was proposed. And primarily because uh, we've all been out there, and it's kind of hilly isn't the right word, but it's not very flat. It's not and very so it flat. makes it very difficult, <laughs> and it really doesn't probably meet like universal access. Or... So we were looking for a material that, or they were looking for a material that could transition between the building and the creek that wouldn't have concerns with recharging, I guess, the, the water behind the wall. That's not the right terminology, surcharge. the surcharge. Okay as well as staying away from the oak far enough that you wouldn't have to put abutments down into the root area. And we were supportive for two reasons. One is it's very close to the creek, which is sort of semi-naturalistic in the sense that it does incorporate man-made features like the retaining wall. It's also off the corner of the building where the Geology Marine Sciences Paleontology Hall is not a historic feature. It was found to be non-contributing in the Phase One report, which had been accepted by Landmarks Commission because it had been built in the 50s and then burnt in the fire and then rebuilt in a different kind of different way. And so we thought it's not creating the type of visual impact it would if it was up against, say, the Gould Indian Hall or one of the other wings. Mm -hmm. So we found it to meet the standards. 
that answer your question? Mr. It sure does. Thank you okay. very much. Mr. Chair. May yes, Commissioner Jury. Um, so just, just for terminology's sake, um, you, the, um, the asphalt that exists, if it was uprooted, it, it would create, retaining wall would therefore become a dam from the upside. Is that, it would, it would hold water. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Mayhan, Commissioner Sharp, any questions? No questions. Commissioner Rios, questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, starting on page one, it states that LAFCO is a decision-making agency for this project. My understanding that it is, not, it is the decision-making on annexation, but not on the project. That rests with the, either the Board of Supervisors, if it goes through the county, or the City Council here. Mr. That, is that correct? Uh, yeah, Chair Suiting, LAFCO is a decision maker just for the annexation. Yes, that's decision. correct. But this says it is the decision making no, it's a, agent oh, for the pro project. That that sentence, that paragraph should be clarified. Yeah. The project. Yeah, well, we will clarify that. But we were okay. just trying to list all the decision okay. makers that were involved. And that's in appreciated. But I think yeah. we want to be clear that LAFCO is not um, yeah. is not a decision making body for the project. They are a decision making body on the annexation. Sure. Um, or the decision making body some, on the annexation. Some of my concerns are concerns, and some of them are questions about the paper. You have uh, the floor. I'll just give it to you. You're, you're giving me the floor. I'm I can giving it roll to you. it up and take it home. <laughs> okay, on page seven, um, you talk about the time changes of 10 to 15 years. That is a long term projection with some of the other things that are proposed and mentioned in the document further on. And um, it's very difficult to sit on a board and be told, well, 10 years ago they approved this. So I think that is one of my concerns. On page eight, um, there, I would like to see the facts which estimate in the increase in neighbors and how many you think they will be coming, increasing. Page 11, um, you talk about over the term the removal of non-native materials, um, non-native na uh, plants. Um, I'd like to see that more clarified and, and quantified. Um, page 11, you talk about a compatible sidewalk, and this needs to be um, defined. Page 12, um, mission related. Oh, let's see. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Second paragraph. Um, mission related educational activities. Um, that should be more specific. Page 12. Last paragraph. I'm working on it. Okay. The last paragraph. Um, wait, page 12. Um, the terrace. It starts talking about the pavements. And in general, it would be very helpful if we had a, a plan that showed all the various pavements because on page 66, you talk about random set pavers. On page 67, you talk about non-historic pavement material. Um, it's, it's all over the place on where it is and where it's not going to be, and it needs to be clarified. On page 12, you talk about the, tr the trash. Last paragraph. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be uh, clarified as to whether they are going to back up or turn around. Um, are there, is there only one trash site for the entire project, or is there more, or this is going to be the one? Th that needs to be clarified. On page 13, fourth paragraph down, you talk about relocating roof equipment, but you don't state where that's going. On page 13, you also talk about um, Four, five. The number of bathrooms. You're increasing the number of uh, by three. But we're no place. Do we have a total of how many bathrooms or how many toilets you have? Throughout the document, it just says we've increased, and you don't know to what. Page fourteen. One, two, three, four. You talk about under previous studies. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Under grading, grading, you talk about the earthwork of approximately 2,200 cubic yards. You don't say if it's imported or it's exported and if it's where it's going to go. 
page 19. See what happens when your husband's not home? You go through things. <laughs> My husband's in China. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you talk about the first paragraph on page 19 of a cutoff of, um, for historic buildings. And um, I've been told 50 years is a cutoff, and some places you use less than that. Some places it's 69 years, and it just seems to vary all over the place. Okay, page 22. You talk about one, two, third, third down. You talk about the docent library. No, that's the first paragraph. And um, that it, it's, it's, you know, not significant. Yet when you add up when it was built, it's 57 years old. And oh, I was always told over 50 years is, is a cutting off point. On page 23, you speak about the uh, sand wall, sandstone retaining walls. Fourth paragraph. Fourth paragraph, Th thank I'm sorry, you. third. Yeah. Uh, on Mission Creek, which has already been mentioned. Uh, the hazard wall on page 24. One, two, three, third paragraph down. This has to do with you have to relocate that, to take part of that off because of a handicap route. Or That's the attempt. Yeah. I see no discussion about looking for alternative uh, ways of doing it, um, alternative sites. and things. This is a, a significant landmark, this wall. And I don't see any discussion about the possibility of changing it. Um, let's see, page 26. I like to point out that the Moore House uh, <coughs> house is, uh, this is the last paragraph, I believe, 89 years old, which makes it a significant elderly house. Um, Mr. Chair. Quick. May I just ask for clarification? Would you like us to respond to these after um, after you have completed your list of comments and questions? I was just thinking it might be easier to do it as you go along since they're since they are numerous. But I, I just I'm well, I was going to submit a list to you, and then they can work on it after that. Mm -hmm. Actually, I typed out a list and left it at home by mistake, so I'm having to go with my written list. I'm putting them in the record, and they'll have to deal with it. That's the way I'm, I'm handling it. Is that all right, Chair Suiting? Um Well, I think they would like a chance to respond to them. Um, Can I make a general comment about many of the comments from the commission? Well, a lot of, a lot of her comments are, are sort of housekeeping comments, but go ahead. Make your comment, yes. Mr. The, Mr. Tyne. the intent of this part of the report, which is the project description in 3.0, is to provide a general overview of what the project is. The detail is in the report when the items in the project description are going to affect historic resources. So in, in, as an example, there's going to be grading on site, but that grading doesn't have the potential for impacting historic resources. There's not a discussion of that in all the detail if it did. So the report provides the general project description, which is consistent with the submittal for the DART, sub, DART submittal for the project. We do not, in this case, and haven't in the past, provide huge amounts of detail for a project of this size. It's more general. And then when you get into the report, into the analysis section, where we're talking about they're taking a window out, they're adding a pathway, they're doing this or that, then we go into that level of detail as it affects historic resources. And so that's why it's more general in this section. And there is no analysis because it's a project description. So in the case of the hazardous state wall, there's no discussion of alternatives in the section, in, in the description section, because it's descriptive. And if you go into the report, there's a detailed analysis and our conclusions regarding that removal of part of the wall. So do you want me to not do any more of this? No, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to explain what our 
format for the report was well, and how it standard. My format was to read it to make it as accurate and complete as possible because these things that can come home to haunt you if they're not done correctly. And I only have a few more I, points. I think it's important for Commissioner Rios to, to get through those mm -hmm. concerns. Um, however, you don't need to um, respond to them on the fly here. Um, it will be part of um, the, the, the motion or the um, effect on this report. Thank you. Okay, continue. Well. I think you left off on page 26. No, I think I, I, I've done the McVeigh House. Um, that, that refers back to page 61. And on page 59, I was concerned about the landscaping, the parking in the lot in the landscaping, bringing it up to standards. And on page 70, I was concerned about the fact that a lot of this pavement that is being proposed in various locations be permeable, and, and sometimes it, sta it states that and it doesn't. I have a couple of broad statements that I would like to make, and one of them is that in the case of most of these items that are used to um, justify or understand what is being proposed, they um, refer to the city's urban historian for approval. And I think it puts a tremendous burden on her because this is a very, very huge project. And I have long believed in the check and balance system of government with no disrespect to our historian, who I consider an excellent person, I think that the commission should also be reviewing projects and that the final decision should not be left with the urban historian, but also to the commission. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one, of my, uh, one of my major concerns. And also, um, the other concern is I see no discussion of the floodplain. And I assume there is a floodplain that in this area. Okay. Commissioner Drury, Mr. Any Chair, comments? I do. I just, um, I'm assuming, perhaps incorrectly, that the, um, when you describe the main museum complex and the bird hall is not um, listed as because it's not a historic building. You mean uh, on a specific table? I'm, I'm well, not. Yeah, what page? Well, on yeah. the, I'm, I'm just starting on page 17, the description of the main museum complex. And I'm looking at the Cartwright Hall, Gould, Mammal Hall, Library, Luria Hall. Um, administration wing, Fleischmann, so on, and the, um, the bird hall is, is uh, I can't see it. I don't see it. Uh, so, I believe that this section was... Um, it's on, it's on yeah. a graph. It's on a chart. It's on, it's on the maps. Yeah. It was not found to be significant, and we were it, focusing it, in the phase one report. Right. Just, yeah. So we were focusing on the historic the wings historic, of the building okay. that had been determined to be significant and that those conclusions have been accepted by the Landmarks Commission. Thank you. Commissioner Lavoie, comments? Um, yes. Um, uh, again, uh, an excellent report. Um, I particularly appreciate uh, the discussion of the use of pavers on page 68. Um, it's um, actually it's some guidance that we've been looking for for a very long time. Um, and I appreciate it. Um, as uh, I'd like to comment on, on Commissioner Reyes's comments, I think they're all very valid. Um, I, I would have the um, city historian review them and review the document to see if it's included somewhere in the document. Uh, but a lot of those issues are things that I think we need to pay attention to as we review the project itself um, as our own responsibility. It, it probably won't affect the um, approval of the report, but it does need to be addressed, I think, as, as part, part of, of, of the project of the project and, and as part of continuing on with this yes. as a, a, a document. Yes. That's the way I'm sensing it um, should happen. Um, Commissioner Mahan, any no further comments? comments? No further comments. Commissioner Sharp. Yeah. Okay. Did you need any clarification? I would just like to clarify one, one comment. Um, some of the buildings are more than 50 years of old age. Some are more than 85. Not a build, just that being more than 50 years of age 
allows the building to be evaluated. It doesn't confer significance. So that's why there are some buildings that are more than 50 years of age that aren't yeah, significant. Get it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so what's the pleasure of the commission? Mr. Chair? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. Commissioner Lavoy. Um, I move to accept the report um, and to refer Commissioner Reyes's comments um, to, the, to the staff historian um, for, for, for answers to the questions she's raised. Second. Okay, motion by Lavoy, second by Drury. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Do you understand you. the motion? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Report with that you do, and that we do. All right, next item on the agenda is concept review. This is a new item for 2559 Puesta del Sol. I want to remind the commission that we are 50 minutes behind, and I apologize to members of the public, but that's the way it happens sometimes. Uh, this is a proposed master plan for the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History to carry out the following improvements anticipated in the next 15 years. Improved accessibility and ADA compliance. Put the put it away. <laughs> point it at me. Full renovations to the Marine Paleo Exhibit Hall and, and restrooms, including an 82 square foot ad addition, replacement of the butterfly exhibit, rehabilitation of Gould Hall, relocation of trash and recycling, new fencing, enhancements to existing outdoor activity areas, landscape improvements, native habitat restoration, mechanical equipment upgrades, and interior repairs to existing buildings. The project requires planning commission review and annexation of parcels 023-250-039. And 006 and 00, excuse me, 068. Comments only. Please introduce yourselves for the record and give us a brief presentation. Mr. Chair, hi. Hi. My name is Suzanne Elledge. Welcome. And we're representing the Museum of Natural History. We do have a presentation for you today. We're thrilled to be here with you today. This is a meaningful milestone to us to be back before the HLC. It's been nearly two years since we saw you last. Did you bring the food? <laughs> <laughs> no food this time. Too. You'll notice that we're on quite a scaled down program these days. Um, so I, we're anxious to make our presentation. It's probably about 20 minutes. I just want to forewarn you, but it is our first time rolling out this new project, so we want to make sure that we cover it adequately. I think some of our presentation will answer some of Commissioner uh, Arias's questions. Um, some of the information is in the plans, and we'll review that today. Um, four of our team members are going to make the presentation. I want to introduce to you the new president and CEO of the museum, Mr. Luke Swetland. He's going to be sharing with you um, the rationale for this new approach. Suzette Naylor will be talking about the philosophy behind the approach, and then Susan Van Atta will talk about the site improvements and Walter Schacht, the architecture. Welcome, all four of you. And obviously, said welcome to you already. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Suzanne, and good afternoon. I've been with the museum for just over one year, so it's a pleasure for me to be able to introduce myself to this commission today. I want to first start by thanking the commission for your thoughtful input on a previous version of this plan. More important, your patience as we went through a six-year-long planning process, and now we have a project in front of you. As you recall, the earlier plan that you reviewed was much more ambitious in scope and envisioned significant architectural changes and development on our site. As I think you're also aware, in June of last year, I recommended to the board that the museum stop all work on that approach. Why? The total cost of that plan, the need to have significant dollars in hand before we could even start, an implementation strategy that would have required we close the museum to the public for well over a year, and the fact that I didn't sense broad, deep community support led me to that conclusion, and my board of trustees agreed with me. The plan we will present today for concept review is dramatically smaller. In fact, it's less a plan for development than it is more an approach to stewardship. Our approach now will provide absolutely necessary but gentle uplift for our site and its buildings. In this plan, 
We are not proposing to demolish any buildings. We're not promosing, proposing to build any buildings. We have minimal tree impacts. We will live within our existing footprint. We will make the very best with what we have. Because in my view, as an academically trained cultural historian, we have a fabulously rich portfolio of assets, both natural and built on our site, to work with. And as a cultural historian, I have a deep respect for the intrinsic authenticity of things that possess history and have a sense of place. This plan is more proportional. It's more prudent. It will cost less, and it's already gaining the kind of public support I, as the president, feel is necessary for it to go forward. It's smaller, yes, but it's no less transformational, and it's no less visionary. So we had three goals in the approach. One was stewardship. And Suzette Naylor is going to summarize how our approach knits together our site, its buildings, our neighborhood context, and the community of Santa Barbara's goals for its Natural History Museum. Our second goal was to take a holistic approach. Susan Van Atta will describe the key site improvements and the overall uplift to the landscape we propose to bring rejuvenation to the entire site. And our third goal was historic compatibility. Walter Schacht will finish by calling out the gentle architectural touches, and I assure you, they are only gentle architectural touches being proposed. And we propose to make them to render our existing non-historic buildings more compatible with the look and the function of the Spanish revival aesthetic of our campus. So with that, I'll turn it over to Suzette. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Well, how are we going to be wise stewards? We've got an embarrassment of riches, natural and historic. But there are two very relevant documents, the historic resource element and the guidelines for EPV. The HRE asks us to ensure Santa Barbara's sense of place by identifying, protecting, preserving, and enhancing our historic resources. By identifying the cultural landscape of the museum as our primary historic resource, we are recognizing the importance of the sense of place cultural landscape provides a sense of place and identity. They also map the relationship of the structure of the land over time. Before we seek to fiddle with that map that we've evolved over the last hundred years since Brewster first put that little courtyard building down, we need to understand the choices of those past hundred years. And with the luxury of hindsight, we're looking at the consequences and the unintended consequences. We use that to inform our design choices, but we're going to make our choices based on adherence with the museum's guiding principles, which are to inspire an awe of nature and a thirst of, for discovery as we promote sustainability and connect with our communities. But we do that knowing that nature is both the end and means of what we are doing. Well, how are we going to incorporate that into what we're doing? We have talked about wayfinding before, but in a sort of practical way. And I'm going to talk about it more in terms of how it works with this. If nature are the ends and means, then when you're on a way or a path, you're talking about direction. You're talking about intent and manner. But you're also talking about when you extend it to a way of life or a way of doing things. You're saying that maybe how you traverse that path makes you view your destination in a different way. So if you go by Conestoga Wagon, to California, it's pretty different than flying in a jet plane. So with this armature of connections that we're talking about, there's an attitude behind them, and it's one of reconciliation. We're going to talk about bridging with our boardwalks, and we're going to talk about mediation with our sensitive resources and with our neighbors. But when we reorient the previous paleo and marine gallery to become the new Santa Barbara gallery to face the creek, and when we start to bridge across that spatial discontinuity in order to allow access to the creek, we are now starting to reconcile past choices and an unintended consequences of that asphalt with our new understanding of stormwater drainage and environmental sustainability. When we fo focus on this so soft infrastructure, we connect to the tradition of mediation of inside and outside of Spanish colonial revival. We're redefining and enhancing the paseo between the Fle Fleischmann and the creek, and Walter will talk about that. 
And we're also expanding the repertoire of inside-outside mediation. We have that wonderful captured landscape in the interior courtyard of the legacy buildings where there's a void and there's captured landscape that's created by buildings. But when we take the McVeigh Cottage and extend that deck into a void that is created by a natural thing, it's a way of thinking again about how you mediate between the two. When we link discrete resources with connectors like the whale to the stone wall to the historic entry, which is very important, and when we retain re views from St. Anthony's to the mountains, and when we enlist previously self-contained areas and precincts like the Collections and Resource Center and integrate them into our web of connections, <coughs> then we're integrating them into a reimagined new community of the Museum of Natural History into the next century. This network, which is fluid and responsive and flexible, also provides a scaffold. We are, as I've tried to say, trying to incorporate our guiding principles in these pathways. But we also want the visitor and the community to stop and start on this connection in the way they wish to. They can have as shallow or as deep an experience of this sense of place and the information we have as they wish. So you can have a little one lift up a leaf and look at a worm, and someone else go into the diorama and the gallery in that stop frame of nature and look at a cutaway section of dirt and see a worm in his burrow and see the bird waiting to eat it. Or you can have someone looking through a worm's eye view through a high-powered telescope to the night sky above. By doing this, we enrich our visitor's sense of place, not only in the museum, but also in the world around us. By doing this, we breathe life into our resources by the breadth and depth of engagement that our community has. By doing this, we begin to protect our resources by ensuring their future. There will be no demolition by neglect because we don't tend to destroy those things that we engage with, that we love and cherish. I'm going to loop back to the guidelines of the EPB district as my last thing. In Chapter 4, in compatibility of new development with existing environment, the commission in writing it and the city in approving it recognizes that each project has a unique program, unique site, unique artistic expression and form, but that it must by necessity achieve compatibility with Santa Barbara as it has developed over the years. We hope that you agree that by focusing on what is specifically unique in this project, revealing our evolving relationship with the land around us and the natural world, its relationship to our sense of place, and reinforcing our ties to the community and its history, that the compatibility is close behind. Thank you. Do I use this one? Well, thank you. Yeah, and we're going to have to actually move that a little bit closer so that we can open the sheets without it being interrupted to you. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Hannah. So how are we going about doing this? Um, that is providing an authentic natural history experience where the landscape itself now is part of the museum interpretive experience. Um, providing accessibility throughout, uh, which would be the preferred route for everyone, not directing people out of the way in order to get around in their wheelchair or in, with their stroller. And then having a stormwater management program uh, that is comprehensive and linked and includes permeable paving, which we'll be looking at specifically. So on this sheet that is opened up now, L.1, we uh, have an overall site plan, and uh, then we'll be going to pages where it's blown up a little and easier to see. But along the bottom of the page, we look at the materials that we're proposing, and we worked uh, carefully with Post Hazeltine uh, to incorporate materials that exist on the site already. We avoided using too many different materials and also the new goal which is uh, an important goal to the city is permeability. So we have a series of materials that address that. Um, for, um, would you like to see the actual materials or are you happy with the pictures? Mm -hmm. no, okay. The actual materials fine. Yeah. You brought it. I'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> not let you do that. I think Walter Thank you, they're lovely. Back, so. <laughs> so we have in we have the natural sandstone for uh, important uh, plaza areas, which I'll show you on the, the next plans. So real sandstone as as a paving material, and then the permeable materials uh, through the. Um, 
the uh, new access down to the creek uh, past Fleischman. We are proposing this uh, permeable brick material because the color is compatible with the historic materials that are there. But they do, it is permeable. And then in the por portions of the site where we actually will be taking out some asphalt where we can, in the vehicle zones, <laughs> we'll have <laughs> these pavers. We chose these because they, uh, we think they tie in nicely with the historic sandstone. And then in the uh, pedestrian areas, this material is actually permeable itself. The water flows right through it, and um, it's an improved version of an earlier version. And in a very small area, we have permeable, permeable concrete, and this is just in uh, some parking areas over to the side. So I'll go through the, the plan and show you how that all works. I'll, I'll let you know what that, okay. So... But it's not the entrance. Okay. So instead of, so universal access throughout. Currently, people have to sort of make their way and try and find the front entry. It's a little hard uh, to find the front entry. So what we've proposed is from the parking lot to take people through a garden experience past the whale garden into this new, this is where this uh, sandstone paving would occur. And instead of this being a big maneuvering area for drop-off and catering and so forth, we develop a portion of it as a nice plaza outside this area with the native sandstone with drop-off and delivery taking up just a portion of that. And then a visitor would move along a, a boardwalk, which we selected because it is reversible uh, in the landscape and provides a nice experience and also highlights the entry and a way to get here. Uh, as you saw in the historic report, there's a proposal to open up the steg wall at this point. We chose this location to open up the steg wall because it's already been repaired in that location. And so that's in collaboration with Post Hazeltine. We selected this way to get through. And then we come, and then uh, it's really important to the museum to really reactivate and make the historic entrance very clear. Uh, another feature on this plan is the new universally accessible route to get across through the heart of the campus uh, to a creekside terrace, and th which then switches over and would get us to the re back side of the creek. Um, so currently this is a lot of different elevations. There's a big pit over on the side, which will be mitigated, which Walter will talk about. And we're proposing the red brick, which interestingly didn't print as red in, in this plan. But this is the, the red bit brick to tie in with the existing paving here and also the paving that goes underneath the arcade, so it's all red. Then we come into the Creekside Terrace, and we've had a discussion of the idea that the, this wood material would help to transition from the built environment to the more natural environment, but it also... Uh, we, we've been told, uh, previously we came to you with a plan that showed removing the asphalt here, and then later we found out we weren't going to be allowed to remove it. The engineers did not want it removed because they didn't want permeability back here. They wanted the capped site so there would be no additional pressure on this old wall that holds up the side of the creek. And then the arborists didn't want us disturbing the root zone of trees. So in order to span all that, this in essence is, is a bridge of sorts, but it is also reversible. Um, as are the boardwalks that occur on the site. So a person could come in here, uh, enjoy this terrace, all very flat and accessible, and then we actually have an additional experience as you come at grade and you wrap around a trail and then are able to get over to the Coggin Shell Ball where there is an existing ethnobotany garden which is being enhanced with a Chumash interpretive exhibit. This is the back portion. One second, let just everybody get to the page so you're not interrupted by page moving. Okay, thank you. Go Two ahead. important things happen on sheet L1.2. Uh, one is that we have, this is an existing drainage which is being enhanced to accept stormwater as part of an overall system of bio, bioswells and stormwater. And as part of the interpretive experience, there's a new pathway that comes into this area and then as it enters the woodland, becomes a boardwalk and an overlook for an interpretive experience of the bioswell. It's not just an interpretive experience, but this whole woodland will be uh, 
restored to native plants. There's a trail system that exists, and it's actually meant to be very beautiful, not just interpretive. And in this, these are, it's in these back areas, and I actually have a, a copy of the plan where, for some reason, the color differences didn't print as well on this plan. But it's in this uh, area that we would use the pavers that I showed that were sandstone colored but were vehicular occur in these back areas. These are sort of the service areas to the site. This little parking lot over to the side is where the permeable uh, concrete is proposed to occur. It's the only location. And um, this is where the trash will be moved so that no backup is required. Currently, um, the, the um, remind me where the trash is now. It's through its... No, the, yeah, it's way in here. So when the truck comes now, it, the beep, 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 beep is this whole distance backing up. Now they just circle around, no backing up, and the trash, they can pick up the trash at this location, which is already tucked into the landscape and you can't see it, but of course we will screen it. Um, and then the other really fun thing about the project is the enhanced, what we call the backyard. And uh, there is uh, currently an artificial creek here that I'm, I'm given to understand was created because the biologists didn't want kids playing in the real creek. And we're enhancing this for universal access. We're adding an island and making it more fun. And we're taking other uses um, like uh, the fort building and the paleo exhibit. And we're bringing it all into this very family-oriented outdoor um, last child in the woods in um, influenced area and this clubhouse has become a clubhouse with wonderful exhibits and fun stuff for kids to do like uh, playing with insects and, and worms and things. There, uh, a, a deck also runs through this area. Again, it's protective of the existing oak trees and is reversible and uh, allows families with strollers to get into here easily. And then it comes and terminates uh, around a tree, which sets high above the creek and creates the treehouse-like feeling that's accessible to all children. And then finally, call, call off the page, please. They're in sheet final A5. Page. So it's the final page of your set. This is A5.12, last page. Before and after photos. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So currently, there's a curb and asphalt that separate the butterfly exhibit, which is in a, qu a Quonset hut form uh, with green netting. Uh, and this railing isn't actually necessarily required. So you can see in the after photo, the idea behind the butterfly exhibit is that you feel like you're outdoors, um, that we're bringing the feeling of Mission Creek all across the site until it... Um, and, and embraces this new butterfly garden with a backdrop of sandstone walls, sandstone structures with wrought iron that takes its influence from the historic building. And um, the, these, uh, what apparently are lightning rods um, of structures, these are actually designed to be as lightweight as they can be. Uh, we worked with the um, uh, structural engineer to make these as lightweight and the idea behind these really is that they be subordinate to the setting and that they uh, be there and that the netting in fact is ephemeral. So let's go to back to the plan and one more I think right so it's we're this one be on L2.0 And I have a larger version of this, if it's helpful. Uh, if that's this correct. Yep. Everybody's got the red sheet. Okay. okay. Continue. Okay. So in plan, you can see that we take the same feeling of the existing boulders uh, and bring it across so it's very informal. It feels very much like a garden. It just happens to need to be enclosed to keep the butterflies in. And these little garden structures made out of sandstone uh, are necessary to get people in and out of the exhibit and not um, uh, without the butterflies leaving with them. It, the butterflies need um, to drink. So there's this, in addition to this um, backdrop sandstone wall, there's a wall fountain 
which you can see here too, and a runnel that gives the butterflies a lot of access to drinking water that overflow into these boulders. So it's, I'm assuming it's water. It's water that they're drinking. We all could use a drink right now, but, yes. <laughs> but the butterflies will be drinking water. So, um, so, this is the, so this is really meant to feel like, a, like the landscape, and that's why they let the landscape architect design it. And uh, so there are other, I'd be happy to go other, with over more details of the. Maybe you could use this one for the elevations. This one's a little easier to see, which, uh, and then there's uh, another, anyway, but I'm way past my allocated time, but um, I'm figuring you'll have questions for me. And uh, Walter will wrap it up. Thank you. So let's spend a couple of minutes looking at the proposed scope for uh, improvements to the existing buildings. Um, I want to reiterate what Luke said. Um, They're on sheet 82.23. Um, AD 2.23. Go ahead, Mr. Sheck. So th the, uh, the museum's goals as it uh, Reevaluated its approach to the master plan were, as Luke said, to live with and improve the existing buildings that form the museum campus. In order to do that, a uh, major goal was to make sure that we were providing appropriate stewardship for fundamental building systems, electrical and mechanical. So it's really not a renovation strategy for most of this. It's really just keeping up with the systems, which many of them are, are, uh, are way past their service life, so we don't envision changes to the building to accommodate that. Secondly, um, the vast majority of the spaces that we're dealing with here are really great museum spaces, and they have been treasured, as you all know, by the community for many years, but they could use very modest improvements, tenant improvements, uh, in the form of paint, improved flooring, uh, better signage, and maybe some addition to the exhibits. And the third thing is, is that we have one building on the campus which is not uh, part of the historical assembly, and that's the Marine Paleo Hall, uh, which sits right here. We're starting with the demolition plan, but just for reference, I'm pointing to Fleischmann, I'm pointing to Gould, I'm pointing to uh, the uh, north and the east end of the original historic core building, this one building actually represents quite a departure from the rest of the, of the assemblage, even though it's knit in with it. It's got a blank wall on the creek. Uh, the exhibits in this hall are perhaps the most tired in terms of relevance to subject matter and visitor experience of any on the campus. And so this one building is the single focus we have for actually doing renovation work and re rehabilitation work following the, the uh, Secretary of the Interior standards for the Gould Hall, which is attached to it. So very low-key approach with a focus on this one building. So I want to show the two demolition plans first so that we get a clear understanding of what's going on. We are proposing to demolish the, uh, the timber um, roof, which connects Marine Paleo over to the education building. It's not a historic feature. It does represent uh, a, a fire and life safety hazard because we have just too many connected square feet of wood frame structure. And even though it was allowed at the time, it really doesn't make sense. And maybe most importantly, we have a couple of very important focal points, the Creekside Terrace, the historic entry to the building, uh, other things along Presta del Sol. But one of our important sequences for visitors is this Paseo, which starts at Fleischmann's Gates, goes between uh, Fleischmann and Gould, and then all the way down to the Creekside Terrace, and this roof sort of blocks the view, and that view, as you all know, connects in two directions. It connects us to the creek looking to the south, but we turn around and look to the north, we get a view of the mountains. So we get two important regional views out of that space. So that's proposed to be demolished. And that's really the only structure being demolished uh, independently on the campus. And then on AD 3.11, we did want to share with you uh, the elevations of Marine Paleo, 
which uh, is actually, now these drawings are, the, the drawing that's one down from the top of your sheet shows you uh, the south side of Marine Paleo, and the dotted lines indicate where we're proposing to make cuts in the wall in order to add windows to that side of the building. Right now, that south side of the building is completely blank on its upper level, uh, and there are small openings into the shop storage facility that's down below. So we want to add some windows here to bring this more into scale with the existing campus and also to provide some views inside that exhibit hall out towards the creek. And then the drawing at the top of the sheet shows the elevation. We're looking west, correct? And we're looking at the flank of uh, Gould Hall where there is an addition that was made, again, not historic, to provide restrooms to the building. The restrooms do not have adequate capacity to serve the museum's needs in terms of uh, water closet and sink count. Um, they are, I guess, uh, basically uh, marginally ADA accessible. We would like to improve that too. So that really describes the scope of demolition that's proposed for the project. So if we go to sheet A2.22. A2.22. Um, A2.22. We will get a larger scale floor plan. One second. Yeah. So AD2. A2.22. A2. A2. Now you want to keep going. You're still in the demolition. And no, 2 2 2. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand on it. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, please. Take two. This now shows what's being proposed in the same area. So if we start at the top of the sheet, um, we are um, seeing where the historic gates are for Fleischmann, and we're seeing the length of this Paseo all the way down to the bottom where the Creekside Terrace shows. We are inside, the, the dotted lines really help uh, describe the work that's being done here. So we are reconfiguring the restrooms we are trying to pull off the neat trick of adding the capacity we need underneath the existing roof overhang. We are replacing the janitor's closet, which sits in one corner with this entry into the men's room. So this is the one place in which we're adding, I think, 82 square feet. Am I correct about that? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all underneath that existing roof. Uh, over to the side, you'll see it says lift. Uh, I think you're all aware of the fact that there's big declivity in the ground plane there that provides access down below. Uh, in our minds, it's unsightly, and it's also dangerous in terms of the number of people that we bring through here. So rather than use that lift as a way to get down into that shop, on, uh, rather than use the ramp as a way to get down to the shop, we're proposing to put a hydraulic lift in here so we can actually open up the ground plane and open up the usable public space. So that's the second dotted line. And then the third dotted line shows uh, the changes to the floor plan inside Marine Paleo. So the work we're proposing here is ties Marine Paleo and Gould together. Uh, you're all familiar with the museum, and I think you're all familiar with that kind of crazy experience you have coming out of Gould into Marine Paleo. It's ramped very steeply. It doesn't meet universal access, and actually it's a hazard if you're not looking where you're going. You just go right down that. Uh, this change enables us to come through at grade, and then we can ramp down amongst the exhibits that are, are eventually developed for this space. We have been asked to provide a second means of egress out of Marine Paleo as a part of uh, improving this. And so the dotted line that you see at the bottom of the page shows a uh, egress stair which takes us down and out. And also there's a, a second leg of the stair that turns to the uh, west, and that means that the shop facility down below has access up to the exhibit floor. They currently have that access in the upper corner of this space, and that's important in terms of the fact that this will be the Santa Barbara Gallery, as Suzette said, and we will have changing elements within this exhibit, so we want to maintain that access. So those are the changes that are proposed to the plan of Marine Paleo. If we turn to A3.11, Let's see where we're going. Is this elevation? Yeah. A3.11. Go ahead. 
So the drawing at the top of the sheet, the dotted line shows the proposed changes on the south side of Marine Paleo. We're adding three windows, which will look out from the Marine Paleo Hall towards the creek. We have a pair of doors that have been added. That's the bottom of that egress stair. And we have a, a, a timbered header detail, and we'll go through and show you uh, the reference that we used uh, from existing construction on Fleischmann Hall to recommend that detail. And then we have a modest relocation of a couple of windows that look into the shop basement space. If we go to the drawing in the middle of the sheet, we see on your left uh, the proposed opening in the stegosaurus wall which again occurs at a place in which repairs have been done to the wall, so not all the material is any longer original. And then the second dotted line surrounds the revised restroom assembly. We basically have taken the details that are currently used there and repeated them. And there is a neat little detail that was developed by the architect who put these restrooms in of this curved surround to the archway. Uh, that would be the original one is actually the one that is to your left or to the north. And that was done so that the intersecting stucco walls didn't hit each other. We have the same problem at the other end, so we've just adopted that, that strategy or technique. And then to your far right, that is a window that looks into that egress stair coming out of Marine Paleo. And we'll show you in a section in a moment. Can't tell in the elevation, but if we were to go back to that egress stair sheet, we would see that in order to slip that in amongst the existing utilities and structure, it's held quite a ways back off the outside wall. So we want to take advantage of that depth for shadow line. So again, we're going with this idea of this timbering detail for the header, and then we have a deep shadow line profile, and those windows are in a, in a, in a deep recess. Then if we look at the bottom of the sheet, you're seeing the south facade of Marine Paleo slightly obliquely, and that's in order to give us a chance to look at the handrail that's on the Creekside Terrace. If we flip to three, two, one. You know, again, uh, the, the heavy dotted lines on this sheet uh, make it easy to find where changes are being proposed. The one I want to call attention to is the one in the middle of the sheet on your far left, and that's that deep... Um, cut into the wall that I just talked about. And you can see the distance from the existing face of the wall back to the, where the windows are, and the stair slides by that. It's repeated, as, as Commissioner Sudik noted, it's repeated again actually in the lower left-hand corner, bigger detail. If we turn to a 413, This sheet represents larger uh, plans and elevations of the areas that we're discussing. <coughs> and actually, the stippling on the elevation gives a clue as to where we're infilling existing openings in order to create the new openings. I guess one I would call attention to is in the upper left of the sheet, it says enlarged west elevation marine paleo. There is, as you know, the doorway that provides egress out of Marine Paleo now that's, that, that is on a very, very steep ramp. And that ramp is not accessible. And the deformation of the landscape, <coughs> the deformation of the landscape is what leads to us not having barrier-free access all the way down to the creek. And so the proposal is to put this window in its place and, and do the egress to the south that we're talking about instead. In the middle of the sheet, you see two photographs from Fleischmann with red lines on them, and that just directs our attention to the uh, timber detail that we've adopted for the use over the two openings, the two large openings, the double windows on the west side, and then the, the door that's at the bottom of the egress stair. And then finally, On 511, we have a, a graphic depiction of the before and after 
for what's going on at Marine Paleo. So at the bottom of the sheet is a photo of the existing situation. You see the blank wall. Obviously, the photo doesn't really reveal the, the, uh, this huge swale that's in the landscape that the Creek's High Terrace uh, helps to resolve. Um, but it does show the blank wall. When we look above, we see the new windows. We see the Creek Side Terrace. And then we do get a sense that we're now able to look all the way up and see the Fleischmann Gates from this location. So that covers a um, broad presentation of the architecture. Mr. Chair, that concludes our presentation. Thank you for indulging us. Um, we really do look forward to your comments and to your consideration of project compatibility. Okay, 40 minutes. All right, so. Um, <laughs> but it was not important bad, to hear bad. it all, and that's why I allowed it. So I'm going to open public comment. I have two speaker slips. I appreciate the public waiting to make their speech. First is Virginia Guess, followed by Elizabeth Fowler. Do I have Virginia Guest still in the audience? Yep, very patiently waiting back there. Thank you. And if Elizabeth Fowler could come up to the front row. She, she had to leave. She had to leave. Okay. Suzette, would you please yes. get out of your chair and let her? I'm I need to push your button. <laughs> I don't have my time yet. Nope, okay. absolutely not. Absolutely oh, yeah. not. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, you've waited very patiently back there. I'll give you as long as you need, just as long as it's not over 10 minutes. Oh, no. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Virginia Guess. I'm a longtime member of the Museum of Natural History. And over the last four years, I have diligently followed the evolution of two master plans for this museum. And finally, this time, under the leadership of Luke Swetland, and his capable staff, I believe we have a winner. I urge you to approve the proposed master plan as presented so the museum can move forward with the improvements needed for it to continue to serve Santa Barbara as it has done for nearly 100 years. Since Luke Swetland assumed the leadership of the museum in January 2013, he has scrutinized all objections to the previous master plan listen to alternatives, and work through every point of opposition to the plan proposed by the previous museum administration. The plan he and his staff present today is a win-win proposal for all, members, staff, visitors, neighbors, and community. The master plan before you rehabilitates structures of historical significance rather than demolishes them and offers measured favors, phases of construction that allow the museum to continue its daily operation rather than shuttering it to visitors. Instead of extensive land excavation in order to erect massive new buildings that would scar the sylvan landscape of Mission Canyon, this plan modernizes existing exhibition halls and incorporates the surrounding native woodlands into a living part of the museum experience. Please accept the proposed master plan as presented. It is one that assures the integrity and survival of this museum. It is a realistic plan. It's doable. It calls for conservation and modest expansion without major disruption to the site, the natural environment, and El Pueblo Viejo district in which it is located. This is the time to act and finally move forward allow the museum to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Guest. Very well said. And so I just want to make sure that Elizabeth Fowler has left the room. Okay. I will close public comment and bring it to the commission for questions. We'll start at my right. How about Commissioner Drury? I do have a question that uh, maybe it's not, it's not necessary, um, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, the, those... We, the people that work downstairs of the, um, the, the hall, call it the catacombs. Is, is there any, any um, proposal to lift the roof line a little bit to make it more a workable space? Or is it just gonna... No, it's really... Uh, no, we, we did take a look at that, but uh, it's a concrete structure at the lower level. So there's, there's and, no... Yeah, we did actually evaluate that. It's just not feasible. Thank you. But um, we are going to clean it up. Okay. So the <laughs> height is good. actually, it's, it's, it's the amount of stuff that's in there that makes it seem so right. dense. And I think reorganized, it'll feel a lot better. Thank you. Commissioner Lavoie. Um, yes, is there an elevation of the deck rail and or detail? Is this the closest than? it gets on A3.11? 
That is currently what we have to show, yes. Okay. A3. I saw, I, I saw it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and uh, it, it, does the boardwalk have rails, or is it just uh, wood planks on the ground? It's, uh, it it uh, would have, for universal access as required, little wood. Little curbs. Uh, little curbs to keep people from accidentally rolling off, but it will not ever be elevated such that it needs any kind of a handrail or, or guardrail. Or guardrail. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and and the, the other question I had, um, and it's maybe a philosophical question, what is the fort building area? And, and I'm trying not to wince when I say that <laughs> next to the, um, the Chumash Interpretive Village. Oh, it's actually <laughs> across the creek from that. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Probably not far enough across the creek. Oh, that kind creek. of fort. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, it's, a, it's actually oh. moved further. <laughs> you finally got it? Yeah, I finally got it. <laughs> okay. I finally got it. It's I actually moved out. further from the existing fort building location. So the, the Chumash Village here, and the fort building is here now, but we've moved it over to here. So it's further is, is, from the village is, now. Is, is it, if you look on the front page, I think there's a picture oh, of a... Okay. Oh, yeah. So it's, a, it's something that has uh, an activity that has long occurred at the museum, the fort building, and the fort building are just materials are provided, and they're always changing, and on the cover is an actual fort. Um, but um, <laughs> we hadn't actually thought of that philosophically. <laughs> but I think that's because. Let him spin out of speech. Oh, yeah. Gosh, please. Uh, well, let's not call it a fort then. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> play building materials. Exactly. Okay, we'll leave fort out. <laughs> please. Okay. okay. That's all. Ms. Arias? I don't have any questions. My questions were involving the document, making it accurate. Commissioner Mann? Um, get this turned on. The, um, were, were you, I don't know which page it is, but were you, were you punching through the wall where you said some, some repair had been done on the wall or mm -hmm. something like that? I, yeah. Right, right in. I think right there. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, the, is there? It'd be it'd be important. No, oh, this is a comment rather than a question. Can we can we find a an example where there is another uh, of access through the wall and maybe be study the sensitivity to how that is done rather than just have a space through the wall. Maybe maybe there's something more important happening. And, and when you're walking by the whale and you're coming to that, this is a comment, not a, anyway. The question, the question is, the question is, is there, is there, a, is there a, an existing uh, uh, opening in the, in the wall and is there an existing opening in the wall? Yes, there is. I can see yes. there is. Oh, at the front entrance. There, yeah. there, there is. I'd like to see a picture of that so that we can compare how, the, how this other thing is going to okay, Right. Work. And so is it, is it in the historic report? Okay, so there is a photo of where. And we actually did set as our criteria where is the best place to yeah. uh, interfere with this historic resource right. as opposed to. But it did coincide you know, with the, the ability to have a nice meandering path through a garden to the front door instead of going along the yeah. street. I'm not criticizing the opening. I'm just trying no, to... No, you've asked your questions and thank, then you've asked your comments. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Sharp, any questions? Just one question. Um, why didn't you propose this years ago? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I had a couple of questions. Um, I guess I'll start with the, the red brick. Um, how, how is that red brick um, permeable? Is it permeable through its crack, through its um, joints, or is it permeable as in flow through? The red brick has the little uh, the, tabs on the, the edges. The lugs. So that's that's what makes it permeable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other um, paver that you have that you show that's a flow through paver. Mm -hmm. It's probably hydroflow or some other. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, is is that the ceramic one? This is ceramic. It's and ceramic. this is an improved version. 
they're no longer cracking on shipment. Right. It's uh, there was a version before that uh, didn't perform well, right. and this is the improved improved version. Good. I guess they Good. used Good. that at UCSB. Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I specifically yeah. mentioned it because I knew you would know. Okay. Um, <laughs> a lot of problems with that original. Oh. I'm glad to know that they've improved. Right. Um, did you study any other connection material between this sort of arrival plaza and where you go through, enter the museum? Um, you mentioned that you chose the wood boardwalk because mm -hmm. it's reversible, um, but is there something prohibiting you or holding you back from doing a different type of material, perhaps the same material that's here so that the wayfinding does Continue. Mm -hmm. it, it, the grading and yeah. the tree impacts. So yeah, it, we were avoiding impacts to the existing yeah, trees in that trees. area, and just that it's it's quite uneven. So there would be quite a bit of fill and alteration in that area. Right. So it was minimizing alteration was right. the criteria. Okay. Um, that's it with my questions, Commissioner Rios. You had another. Yeah. Or you had a question? Um, we had a previous applicant. I don't think you were in the room. But there was a lot of discussion about uh, accessibility for the handicap, mm -hmm. and that where there is a main entrance, you have to have accessibility. Are you aware of the changes in the rules that evidently have been within six months and may also have to affect on your plans? Let I don't see, know. Let's see, <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can answer that question. Uh, yeah, go I, I, I think that those rules of apply to new structures, um, ground up new. Um, also, we can apply, I believe, the historic building code to okay. this building. Okay, good. So okay. mm -hmm. we're not going to have the same problems all that right, we good. were. I just don't want to see right. any problems Hopefully that you find all of a sudden. Right, okay. and you don't need to be concerned with that too much unless um, you get to the building department and you get dinged, but I don't think you will. <laughs> Um, it's, a, it's a moving target. One, yeah, one more question. The existing pavement here, what is that? It is a red tile. So it's similar. Uh, is that it there? Yes, and it's stained. Right. Yes. It's stained, right. and it, it, it matches the uh, scored red concrete that's underneath the arcade. Okay. You're abutting the brick to that. Right, and the idea was to, um, that did come from the historians, that they felt that the way to be compatible and have it be permeable would be that the color be the same. And I think, based the banding, on... The, uh, the banding. sandstone banding around the uh, open courtyard? Remains, right. So there would actually be the uh, sandstone... Banding. Banding. Okay, no, I, I, I can visualize it now. Yeah, I know... Yeah, button. so okay. you can see so. the sandstone uh, uh, paving is shown on here. Okay. Yes, the banding separates it. Sorry about that. I, they're by a but, but they're not a but. Yes, so okay. uh, I actually misinterpreted That's that. Nuts. And and I believe okay. that these pavers were manufactured to tie in with right. the concrete mm -hmm. underneath. Right. Okay. Uh, any other questions? All right, comments. We'll start with Commissioner Sharp. Comments. Well, we think you already know your comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My only. My biggest concern is the, the new deck and the detailing, the materials, obviously, handrail. The deck, handrail, how to hide the existing asphalt to remain under there. And that, that's sort of the centerpiece of, of what you're adding because it's so foreign to what is currently to be matched in all ways for the rest of the campus. So I'm going to be concerned about that. Other than that, I, uh, it's, it's certainly hard to criticize or come up with uh, <laughs> critique. <laughs> critique. We can a, a critique. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Mahan? Uh, yeah, this this is, uh, I think it's just wonderful. And uh, uh, this is exactly what Santa Barbara is about, is taking our our precious architectural resources and recycling them and making them better. And uh, this is, it just, the whole concept is really wonderful. I'm, 
I'm very pleased. The, you know, we're going to fuss with some details like the deck and whatever, but the, the uh, cutting through the wall and, and that it should, it having those little uh, stone spikes, I think, would be nice, at least on both sides of the opening. Um, the detail of w where the window was recessed here, I can't, you know, where the window was recessed and there's a little column mm -hmm. in the middle and then the, the, uh, the wooden beam on top was right. kind of mm -hmm. off, right. was, not, <laughs> was not centered on the column, it was eccentric, the load was eccentric. And I think that, I think the detailing would be, would be more appropriate if the stucco curved back under, you had a little drip there, so it makes it easy to flash. And the and that beam gets uh, gets uh, centered on that column. I mean, yeah. that's a, th 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 this is so wonderful that we just you know, again pick in nitpicking you. Um, so um, that was something that I noticed. But I but my hats off to you. I think this is a, this is a great master plan, and I can certainly support it. Commissioner Rios, his comments. Um, I fully support it. I think it's excellent. I just want to make sure that the environmental reports are accurate and complete and not challengeable and um, I w again would like to see if there's any way that you could save not remove any part of that <coughs> historic wall uh, let's see is there anything else that's it I just I think it's great oh and I I, I will, I will uh, age myself by saying I was on the planning commission when the whale was approved <laughs> That makes me old. <laughs> Say when the whale was born? No, when it was approved in Turkey. Commissioner Mayhem? I mean, Commissioner LeBoy. <laughs> the other bill. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll echo the commendation. Thank you for the strength and the fortitude and the wisdom for dialing this way back and um, being a better steward of what is there and both environmentally and structurally and historically. Thank you so much. Um, again, um, with the other commissioners, uh, my comments are about the minute details of, of what's being proposed, um, not, not the scope. I fully support your new direction in the master plan um, and can make the, all of the findings that one needs to make uh, in, in this day and age to support your project and let you go ahead. Um, the, I, I share um, the concern about what the deck looks like, and, and as you heard my comments to the historical report, I'd probably be more comfortable if it was on the ground and looked like part of the site more than a deck. To me, the introduction of a deck in that environment is, is like this is an alien feature to my experience of, of the site. Um, I'm glad to see the asphalt go away, though. Um, very happy to see the asphalt go away. Well, it doesn't really go doesn't away. It go just away. gets buried. Well, okay, it's fine. <laughs> well, it it visually happen. goes yeah, away. Okay. Um, and um, the, uh, as to the details, I, I probably have more um, issues with the butterfly exhibit. Not, not its location, not its scale or size, um, but perhaps its detailing. Um, the, um, the sandstone arches as an entry element um, are a little modern, but I think that's fine. Um, there was a comment in the report about you know, the graphics of showing it, that it's really built out of sandstone as opposed to a veneer applied that has nothing to do with structure. Um, and I trust as the drawings get developed, they'll be finessing that. Um, the... Um, and, and I like the fact that once you're inside there, it's a very natural environment, um, and that it sort of bleeds out to its surroundings. Um, but the, the piece, the two pieces of it that I they have the most difficulty with, is the fountain itself. It's 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 not natural enough. It's or it's not Hispanic enough, and and I probably would prefer it being more natural looking than Hispanic looking, because what you're doing there is a natural sort of environment, and I find that very modern, <coughs> lovely fountain, but inappropriate to the surroundings or the architecture or the intent of everything else you do. And then having said that, well, part of, uh, I mean, probably my major objection are, are the, the, the metal 
tree forms. Um, it's not a tree form that one finds on the site. It's not an oak tree form. Um, and I find those six sticking up and they look like 3D models that you buy of, of trees and, you know, and, and they, they just don't look like trees. That I'd rather they not try to look like trees, um, that they look like what they are, a support, uh, that maybe there's a little bit of detailing that, that is evocative of Spanish poles or something, um, I, I'd be much more comfortable with. Um, the intent of using a lightweight tension structure to support the, the, the um, netting, I think, is, is a desirable, probably. Again, that, that natural environment. But, but this sort of very artificial-looking tree, just it's like putting plastic flowers in your garden. Um, you know, just um, the, the detailing, uh, the, the window that um, Commissioner Mayhem was talking about, I think it'd be much more successful if that window was the full width of the opening, and there were, it, it, it's always bothers me when people put plast, plaster returns and the window is smaller than the opening at the wall. Typically, we just make it flush all the way back. Uh, just either make the opening smaller or the window bigger. Um, and that's it. Uh, the, the, the openings proposed in the windows or in the, in the existing buildings, fine. Um, everything else, fine. Um, the awnings could be a little bit bigger, a little mm -hmm. bit taller, a little bit. Those are big windows. They need to shade the windows. That's what awnings are for. They need to be bigger. So otherwise, you know, that, that's, if you know me, that's, that's pretty few comments for <laughs> such a large, important project. Um, and I would encourage you to continue. It's, you, have, you have my support. Commissioner Jury. I've got about a half an hour's worth of stuff to talk about. <laughs> um, I support Please. this project wholeheartedly. I'm really pleased. I was pleased to go to the uh, public meeting the other night. And, um, I do think the deck is a, needs to be massaged. I think that needs to be worked in and made more natural, a natural progression. Um, and I think that there, I, if I read the, the plans, the presentation correctly, there's a, is there a sandstone wall? on the south elevation of the building behind the butterfly exhibit? Sizable piece oh, of sand? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think, that, I think that needs to be studied. I, that, that seems to be a rather large chunk um, against all that Hispanic architecture. But that's something that you know, we can talk about later. I, those are the, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for things to criticize. I find this to be a really, uh, uh, yeah, that's on that. What? Um, A5.12. Um, I, I think it's a, 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 a we say, win-win for, for all of us, for the, those of us who've grown up with the museum and the people that are going to be visiting it. I think it's a, a wonderful <coughs> iteration of it. And I'm very pleased that uh, my favorite place, the Mammal and Bird Halls, are just going to be renovated. That's, uh, that's a, a great, great plus. Thank you. We have 21 minutes. Oh, 20 more minutes? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A um, couple of comments that I wanted to make. And um, I think it's really just the two. Um, well, I'll start, I'll start with, with this, this connection um, that I asked the question about. Um, it... I agree with the reasons why you're doing it. I just don't feel it serves your purpose of of connection, connecting and wayfinding. Um, I I find that there's still then a disconnect between where you arrive or where you land from the parking lot and where you need to go, um, and it's that connection there. So I, I need you to study that material and come up with a clever solution on how to make that connection. Um, I have a little difficulty with the timber detail that you're using over the, the window on the Marine Paleo um, West Elevation. Um, it's a handsome detail, but I think it's handsome on the Fleischmann building and the Fleischmann Arbor, Fleischmann entrance. Um, when you start repeating that on other buildings, 
it dilutes the specialness, I think, of where it appears in the Fleischmann. Um, I don't know that other commissioners agree with me. Everybody else seemed to like it, but I want you as the architect, as the, the, the applicant, the, the designer, to think about that. Um, so I, that, that, those are my only two comments. Um, I'm going to summarize. Um, the commission feels that this master plan is superb and very supportable. The project scope is much more I hate to use, but much more supportable, or much has much more support. Has okay. great merit. Has great merit. The, this project scope has great merit. All right. The deck and the handrails need further study to be more sympathetic to the site. Details of the butterfly exhibit need further development. For instance, the sandstone entry and exit structures. The f butterfly exhibit fountain should be more natural in its form and appearance. The metal tree form of the netting support at the butterfly exhibit may not want to or need to emulate a tree. Study the new window on the marine paleo west elevation to be a bit more traditional in its size and composition. The awnings should be larger. Study the sandstone wall north of the butterfly exhibit on sheet A5.12. It may need to be more sympathetic to the Spanish building behind and study the connection of the delivery drop-off area to the main entrance through the stegosaurus wall. Study the treatment of the penetration of the stegosaurus wall. Study the end treatment of the penetration through the stegosaurus wall. Um, did I get everything? The, 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 and paving the material? The, oh, go ahead. Yeah, let, let, let Commissioner Rios, then I'll go to you. Uh, the, a, the wall that is being changed, the historic wall for the access. A stegosaurus wall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned that. that. I mentioned center. that. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the paving? Oh, excuse me. But did, didn't you also mention the, the paving in that area? As, as um, the, I, I, I talked about no, the... No, 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 no. The, the paving at the, through the wall... The, I, the I did. I said the study mm -hmm. of the connection of the um, delivery drop-off area to the mm -hmm. entrance, including okay. the paving material. Okay. You mentioned the deck. <coughs> I said yes. um, mm -hmm. yeah. deck and handrail need further study to be more sympathetic mm -hmm. to the site. Mm -hmm. Damn, Great. I'm good. I would, yeah, you know, <laughs> I would like to add one comment saying that, that this is a very, very important project to the residents of the city of Santa Barbara as well as all the people who will come and visit this site and that the Landmarks Commission wishes to be involved and informed and kept abreast as things progress. Um, <clears throat> we want to know because if something goes wrong and we'll we're going to hear about it, <laughs> the phone rings a lot. <laughs> so. We want it really to be a successful project, and working with our historian and with the commission is the best way to achieve that. Do you want that comment to be part? I would appreciate okay. it if it would. Can you get? Did you get the gist of that comment, Ms. Feliciano? Yes, that the commission would like to be kept informed as the project progresses. And that, and that we work with the historian. That there be a, you know, right now it's recommended that the historian makes decisions and. Or approves or does things, and I think it's better if the commission is involved in this process. Supplements the historians. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair, I will make that motion. Um, it's comments only. Oh. Mr. Oh. Chair. Well, we can okay. Uh, hold on, please. Okay. So we need to make a motion. I'll to continue. continue it indefinitely. Okay. Second. And a motion by um, Sharp. Mr. Second Chair. Second by Mahan. Under discussion. Did you have something? No. 
Well, yeah, I think probably what yeah. um, Ms. Elledge is going to ask for I'm is that, that we there. do preliminary <laughs> um, findings. That we, that we find the project um, compatible. You read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. It's not. I can hear you. It's no, not generalized. It, 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 it is not. But, but that in our comments, that we find that it is approvable and compatible per our guidelines. I don't think we want to do that. I think we can do it. Uh, yeah. Chair Suiting, if I could, you, your your commission has the ability to do that. We will need the compatibility analysis done before we go to planning commission. In if, if the commission's okay with doing that now, um, it's okay if you do that now. Um, but it's comments only. It's, that's the way it's agendized. It, and it, it'll, it'll come back to us, right, before? That's I, right. I get that, but, yeah. Just just to be clear, this this is still comments only. It's a conceptual review. And it's not any action that you're taking. It's just your communication to the planning commission. If you believe the project is ready to go to planning commission, that to me sounds like an action. It's it's not an action. Okay. This is trust con concept you. review. <laughs> so, well, I did I did state in my comments that I thought it would be compatible with the okay. findings we need to make later. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. But okay. I don't have an issue with it. Do you have that comment, Ms. Feliciano, that this project? The commission finds that this project that the compatibility analysis could be made for this project. I know. I know. So, Mr. Chair, may I make a suggestion? Could we come to your next meeting just for the purpose of you making the compatibility findings or the considerations for compatibility? Because um, you need from that to what vote I planning commission. Well, yes. And um, actually what we need it for is for environmental review to commence. That's really what the compatibility analysis is for. It's that the broad scope yeah. and of, okay. of the project, everything we're talking about now, they are the details, and we're thrilled to hear that. <laughs> In order for staff to begin their environmental analysis, those compatibility considerations have to be found favorably by your commission. That's the process. Mr. Chair, I think the cleanest way to do it is to put it on the next yeah. yeah, and that was my request. Uh, uh, well, Mr. Gullett. Uh, Chair Suiting, thank you. Um, if, it's, if it's the will of the commission to continue this back to the commission, um, notwithstanding the compatibility analysis, that, that should be your motion. If the commission wants to um, continue this indefinitely to the planning commission, no. Um, then, then it would be appropriate to okay. do the compatibility. No, I think I, I think the cleanest, um, safest way to do it is to continue it two weeks for them to come back to make for us to make the compatibility findings. So it needs to be agendized like that. Okay. Um, we does, would recommend that it be first on the agenda. I will amend my motion to uh, have this project come back to our next meeting in two weeks. Could we ask that it be placed first on the agenda? First on the agenda. First on the agenda. Yeah. Thank we, you. We can we can ask. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Um, and the seconder of the motion is okay with it. Um, I'm going to allow you like 10 seconds because I got to call a question. I just want to know what kind of presentation, if any, you would like, or if we just come before you to have you make the findings. Just come before us to make. Thank the you. Findings. <laughs> right. Everybody okay yeah. with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Our sincere thank.